A lot of people out there will tell you what you need to do first thing in the morning to burn more body fat and build more muscle, but I'm gonna tell you something different. Don't do this thing in the morning. First thing when you wake up, go on your phone. It's a terrible way to get started. It actually primes your central nervous system for stress. Uh, studies show how you set your day up in the morning can have effects that affect the entire day. And again, we get up on, look at our phones, get that, those alerts, get all that weird, crazy news, social media. Don't go on it. Wait at least a couple hours before you check your phone. This yeah. one is like speaking directly to me right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ever since I started this docu-series, I'm back to like, you know, influencer oh, game or whatever. Interacting with uh, randos. And I just don't, man, I <clears throat> I can't stress enough how much I don't like it, you know? I just don't like the, and I, and because I'm, I'm very aware of that. I'm very aware. Because you weren't doing it. Yeah, I'm very aware that it, pull, and it pulls yeah. it. It pulls it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm having to, I'm posting every single day. I'm engaging with the audience. And I get, uh, I, I get the, the, the people that are very happy and, and uh, receptive and, and encouraging and, and they love it, you know? And then there's the other half that are just, the hate and the talking shit yeah. and the, you know, all the, it's like, and it's just unhealthy to consume that. And, you know, I mean, we, we're all at an age and a place in our life where it's like, I don't, we don't have to, I don't, I don't want to, I don't have to, I'm not going to. And so it's like this necessary evil right now because of what I've committed to, right. I've committed to do this thing. Um, and so I'm going to, and I will see it through, but I already feel it pulling me where I do bullshit like that, where it's like yeah. Saturday morning, wake up and I have like a normal routine and I find myself like, oh, I wonder how the docuseries is doing. Let me open it yeah. up and look. Right. Yeah, two of the most plastic uh, times uh, of the day for the brain, right? So the brain, it molds itself. Uh, you have neural pathways that can change depending on behaviors. And there's there are times of the day when it's primed, the brain is primed to to move into certain directions versus others. And there's two times. It's before bed and it's when you wake up. Yep. So right before bed, if you consume certain types of information that induce certain feelings, okay? So that's what that's what we're looking at here. What kind of feelings do I want to induce my body? And that feeling then primes your, your mind and your body. And if you do this first thing in the morning, if you wake up and you get on your phone, and social media is a bunch of, you know, it's a bunch of fear. It's a bunch of alerts. It's, uh, you know, lists of things I need to do. I got to get to work maybe, or it's news, it's politics. It's look at this crazy thing that happened, whatever that primes your brain for the rest of the day. So your brain actually gets set up for, uh, you know, more of that kind of stuff. So if it's stuff that gets you kind of worked up and annoyed and irritated first thing in the morning, your brain is actually <laughs> primed for it yeah. for the rest of the day. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Primed for that for the rest of the day. Well, if it's alarming information first thing in the morning, your brain is your brain is now primed to be alarmed for the rest of the day. Or, so that means if or you, negative. you're going to look for it in, in yeah. any yes. interaction you have with other people to their <laughs> misfortune. You yes. know, it's like it's so it's so unfortunate that uh you know that's and it's unconscious a lot of times because you're taking it in and then uh whatever the subject is that comes up and you're talking with you know your significant other your kids whoever it is that like brings something up it's like whoa ah, like oh, very katrina, short katrina called me out on it just literally the other day because and she's been really patient because she knows that we're committed to this doing this and she knows it's not normal and she's all it's not the first time she's been in this in our relationship where i bury myself into something and she just becomes the amazing supportive partner and she has been, and you know, I, I'll get in it like that and I'll be in it all day. And then all of a sudden I get short, you know, short or cause I'm irritable because of what I'm reading and engaging yeah. with and yeah. doing. And then it all of a sudden changes and then it's not her fault. Like, and then all of a sudden I would give her a short response. And then, so she's just like, Hey, easy. I'm not one of your Instagram trolls. Right. So, <laughs> you know, and yeah. I'm like, Oh man, like, shit. Right, uh, yeah, no, I'm, shit. Bad. I'm going to connect this. I'm going to connect this to things that people care about, which is like fat loss and muscle gain. Uh, although I think you should care about how you, how you prime the way you feel, but let me just give an example, right? So you're meeting, you're talking with someone, you're hanging out with them and they give you a funny look or you get a weird feeling. Now, if you're primed to be alarmed or primed to be irritated, you're more likely to think, What's wrong with that person? What's, mm -hmm. what's going on? What's is this something I did? What did I do? What's happening? If you're primed to be joyful or thoughtful, you might be like empathetic. Yeah, like oh, maybe something's bothering them. Yeah. I wonder if, if everything's okay, or or maybe you'd be like, eh, you know, it's probably nothing. Has yeah. nothing to do with me. I hope everything's fine. Right now, the feelings that you have change your hormones, your hormones and and, and other chemicals in the body, and then those things change how your body adapts and processes how it processes food, how it adapts to 
stimulus uh, like exercise. So you could change your cravings. It could change things like blood sugar level. We know this, by the way. If you, if somebody had a CGM on, right, a continual glucose monitor, measuring your blood sugar, and you ate nothing, but you got an al alarming phone call, and then they, you would see on the CGM a spike mm -hmm. in blood sugar. What's going on? Well, you're you're stressed, and so your body is telling your liver to dump this sugar out, right? This to this glycogen out because you're stressed. You're gonna need extra energy. So now you have a spike in blood sugar which then has to be followed by this spike in insulin. You get enough of those throughout the day or you get that moderately high throughout the day, your body starts to become or lose its sensitivity to insulin. And then this can become lots of different problems, metabolic issues, right? So how you set yourself up throughout the day, literally, if you if you think of your day as, as having a filter that you look at through the entire day, it could take that filter and shift it to a more positive, more thoughtful, more, you know, uh, you know big picture. Mm -hmm. Or you could shift it to me focused, selfish, upset, angry, irritable. And that's how you start your day out. So it's very important to start your day yeah. out intentionally. So what I'm what I'm trying to say here is be intentional about it. Most of us don't start our days out intentional. We wake up and then we what calls to us is our phone. We get on there and then the phone directs us. Whatever news directs us, whatever's on there directs us versus you know, when I first wake up uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to intentionally read this thing. Yeah. I'm going to take this time. And then by this time, then I'll allow myself to, you know, to get on my phone or whatever. And be honest about your behaviors and patterns. And like, I had to really have like a, an honest gut check with that and put my phone in a place where I can't get it. Like yeah. I, I was like, I have to put this just far enough at a distance. So uh, I'm going to end up going to brush my teeth, do my routine, do all these things ahead of time before I even get to it. Uh, because before that I would, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to look at it. Maybe I'll just, you know, grab it for a second and just see if there's anything pressing I need for work or whatever it is, like, you know, whatever justification I have for it. But uh, I started to just put it like, literally on the other side of the room in the corner uh and it's like charged up over there so like I, I would i can't even hear a noise i can't hear like i can't see any little light ding or anything because it's just like that will set me off and it will affect my whole day yeah i mean there's another tip right in what you just said too which is uh doing things with intent that's you know? it like think of if you just ap approached everything that you do with intent or purpose uh, it probably would reshape a lot of things that you do. Totally. Like just think like, but cause we do so many things reactively. Mm -hmm. I mean, we tend to do that. We're like, that's, we tend to allow things to unfold and then we react to them versus setting your intentions out from the jump. Like, you know what today and that, why that's so close to home for me right now is I had just recently the, um, the injury that happened to me and boy, did it just, it nagged me out, dude. Of course. I, it really just was super. I mean, and I had this moment. Uh, it's recorded. You get to watch me live. You, you recorded. You're, you're on a live. While <laughs> yeah, you're here, yeah. You're yeah, yeah. Real so, time, yeah. So you, I mean, it's not like you, I mean, I or was you not telling your face. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was not prepared for that. Yeah. I was not trying to do something. It was just like, and then inside I'm wrestling with this like feeling that I'm having. And then, now, did you want to, by the way, when I watched it, I thought, man, did you have a feeling like just turn the phone off? I mean, I'm oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. I, I was so, and, and I was part of me pacing in the garage was just like, uh, like trying to gather my thoughts, wait, you know, I, I guarantee everybody's been here before. A lot of people have been there before. So as much as I wanted to just disappear, I was like, you know what, I'm going to work this out. I'm going to, I'm going to talk through it. And then, the, and then if you, I don't know if you paid attention, but the very next day I'm like, you know what, I, I woke up and I said, we're going to turn, you know, lemons into lemonade. Like this is an opportunity for me to do these things and work on these body parts and I can still mm -hmm. build a ton of muscle and build a great physique and then continue to rehab. And it was a lesson learned, shame on me type of deal, but that's right. This is going to be a pot. And like, so I literally the next morning had a, a yeah. morning like that. Well, that's how I started the morning was I'm not going to allow that thing mm -hmm. that really, really did set me back and discourage me. I mean, that was just yeah. like, Oh, especially on a pro like I would care. I mean, no matter what, it would be discouraging. But the fact that I set out this thing, like I'm going to go do this thing yeah. to yeah. the world and yeah. now I'm documenting it. And then the last thing I want is a setback like that while I'm in the process of trying to show everybody, watch me build as much muscle as possible in the shortest period of time. That is not working in my favor. Yeah. You know but it's so relatable, you know, like to that point, like so many people get value from those moments because it is like you're going to face that. Like it, you have all the intentions, everything's working out just how you have it set. But you know, then all of a sudden, boom, psh, you know, this challenge presents itself. I'm glad you said that. Cause when, when I say 
it, you know, start your day out with intention. What I don't necessarily mean is you plan your day and try and control everything. And then this is how everything's going to work out. Right. Yeah. That will also screw you up when it doesn't go that way. And life's going to do that, especially yeah. if you have kids and, you know, like stuff happens. And then you had all these plans. Well, I was supposed to do 15 minutes of, you know, meditation or prayer. And I was supposed to, but then my kid woke up like this. And then you're super disappointed, right? All your expectations are dashed. Right. That's not what I mean. What I mean by your intention is starting out your day with something that's going to propel you, prepare you for the unknown. And so that's, that's, that's what I mean that. So it, you, it may be something esoteric. It probably should be something esoteric, something big picture. If you have a faith, something, start your day off with something like that. Because then whatever happens with the, throughout the day you're in a different place. Will you're, you will you uh, share with the audience what you sent me? Which what, what did I send you? I your, forgot your prayer that you wrote. Oh, that I don't you've know. Been, that's really personal. Prayer. I know, but yeah. it's really. I mean, it's really for on, parenting. I mean, it's just it, to yeah. me, it's so on point to yeah. what we're talking about. Like you, you have something that's it's very important to you, and instead of letting the wind blow you left or right, yeah. like you're making it a daily thing that. And not only did you just pray, you thought about it and you wrote, I wrote it, out, it out, which I think is a very powerful way. I have to like five that I've written out. Uh, I mean, I'd love for you to share one of them. You don't have to share all of them or anything like that, but if there's one, because I just think that's such a, it's an exercise that I'm actually guilty of not doing. And I know the power and the value of that. Like, I mean, I, I my whole life, we grew up um, religious, spiritual, right? And so um, I know the power of prayer and, and, and do, using that as an exercise. I think when you actually make it very intentful like that and, and go like, you know what, I'm going to gather my thoughts mm -hmm. or the, my things that are important to me and I write it all out. So I have a prayer that like, this is what I, I did. I wrote it out. I wrote a few out. I won't. And the one that I wrote out was for being a parent. And, uh, it, I mean, I wrote, I wrote it out, I read it and it worked. It, it literally, literally worked. And the way it worked is I got changed. So it wasn't like the things around me That's right. got changed. I got changed. And then I encountered more challenges when you're a kid, you're going to, I mean, excuse me, when you're a parent, you're going to encounter, uh, in, like you're just, it's just, it's a hard thing to be a parent. It's a hard thing. You, you love something more than yourself and the battle, the thing that I'm becoming aware of, which was, it's true for health and fitness. So as a, as a person who's managed gyms and trained, you know, clients and all that stuff, you guys know this, the struggle was always between your clients and the world. It was like, okay, here's what it takes to be healthy. But everything else is telling you to do this over here. Mm. Everyone else is telling you to be this way. Every All the food, all the medications, all the ways you're supposed to live, the world is telling you to do it that way. But if you follow that, you're going to be unhealthy. So I'm telling you to live totally differently. So this is that's why it's such a struggle. It's a struggle because you got to be different. Raising kids is no different. It's it's There's a right way to, to raise your kids. And that's usually countered what the world and what the media tells them. So that's what the prayer was. So it said... I said in it, it said, uh, Lord Almighty, thank you for the blessings of children. Thank you for letting me experience a small piece of godly love. I am challenged, Lord. Please give me clear wisdom and strength and conviction when parenting. Please help me be present constantly so I can be consistent. Lord, help me remain firm and not yield to fear or to their threats of rejection. Lord, give me reminders of your love and support as I present parent my children in ways that counter the world. Lord, give me calm and loving feelings I need to parent my kids and help me raise them to turn to you and to turn away from the world. Uh, amen. So it's that, and that helped a lot. And, the, but you'll hear in there, the fear, fears of rejection. Mm. That's the struggle for, at least for me, a lot of it is like, yeah, know, yeah. I want to be my kid's friend all the time. Yeah. Oh, well, and I think the powerful one. thing that you just said too, one. is that, uh, you know, a lot of people think that you do something like that and then you get what you want. <laughs> you get an answer. It's not always the answer that you yeah. want. You know what I'm saying? But you get an answer. Well, I, 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 pr I, 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 if you hear it, it's about me. It's not about fix my kid, fix that. Right, it's like, right. Help me, help me, give me the strength I need, you know, type of deal. But yeah, starting the day out with intentions like that um, is not the same as trying to control your day. And yeah. that's why when you said what you said, Justin, I thought yeah. that was so important because in our space in fitness, I think a lot of people think starting your day out with intentions means schedule. Mm -hmm. Oh, Good. this is what I'm doing this time. You know, it's like it's all exactly those. Exactly what they think. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Good luck with your schedule. When it goes wrong, and then now you ruined your day. It's what you're gonna feel like. My whole day is ruined because it didn't go exactly the way I, yeah. I missed my workout. My meals weren't planned. It's like, well, you, you definitely schedule, definitely plan, but also set your intention to be in a, in a different space. So when that when the thing doesn't work out, it's all good. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now if you want it. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right.
back to the show. You know, I was going to ask you, Adam, you brought up your injury. I, we have to talk about how shocking it was to get injured because of how the peptides made you feel Yeah, leading up to that. And I think this right. is a good warning for people yeah, yeah. who use uh, these healing peptides like BPC-157, thymus and beta. It's the bad side of it. Yes. It's, uh, so it's so damn effective. I was just like sharing this uh, with my my um, sister-in-law just had surgery and she's healing and she's actually using uh, thymus and beta and, and, uh, and BPC right now. She's kind of asking me like, you know, well, will I feel it or this? Uh -huh. And I'm just like, well, right now you're in a cast, so you're not going to feel or see much at all. It's when you start rehabbing. If you know what an injury like that normally takes mm -hmm. or what the doctors are telling you, oh, expect six months to a year. Like what you'll notice is the speed at re recovery when you start rehabbing. I said, and I said, it's, it's scary fast. If I had to put a number on it, I know this is completely generic and there's so many other variables, but I'd say it cuts it in half. Yeah. The recovery time, which is crazy when you think about that. Like, you, if you have an injury, and I'm I'm very familiar with injury. I've been in, I've been uh, injuring myself for many many years, and for the most part of it, uh, you know, I've been rehabbing myself. You know, I have I've been lucky to be surrounded by a lot of really brilliant people that are in the physical therapy world, and obviously in our field uh, have a pretty good understanding of the body. And so, been rehabbing myself. So when I get injured, whether it be an ankle roll, a toward ligament, you know what or, to expect. I know what to expect. Like, yeah. oh, okay, this is going to send me back this long. I'll take that. And that shit, like, it wasn't even until you actually asked me the other day, like, when exactly when I had to go on my phone, yeah. and I was like, oh shit, that was actually just like four weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm already pushing weight on that thing. That was, it's like, wow. Yeah, you had a visible tear yeah. with, with uh, bruising. Yeah. That takes months. It's yeah. like three months before you can start because it takes a long time. You were feeling nothing. And so here's the dark side. The dark side is you'll, you'll use these peptides. You'll heal way faster. Still don't push yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do not push yourself because it doesn't mean you're ready. It means you're getting ready faster. Yeah. yeah. But don't be like, I'm all good. Yeah. And go for it. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, again, like a lesson I, I, I need to continue to learn. Right. But uh, that's totally what I would say is the, is the probably the, the bad side of it. Right. If that, if it is right, that's like. You just have to be really aware to still take it slow and that you're just Dude, coming off. Speaking of peptides, I've been reading about GK, GHKCU for the skin. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. That's, that's Doug over there. Yeah. You're big on that, aren't you? Don't you consistently use that? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Yeah. We have a, a sponsor, actually. Yeah, and Tara. Yeah. And Tara Skincare's got it, the blue yeah. one. The blue one's got GHK. He's, so the, he's the best about being yeah. on top of all that So stuff. I use it all the time. But and nonetheless, if you look at the studies on it, it reduces oxidative stress, specifically from UV uh, UV rays. It is anti-cancer for the skin. It they've identified uh, thirty something percent of the genes in the skin, when applied, that will switch to a rejuvenating state versus damaging state. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's like it's so uh, when you read about it, this is like we're probably five years away from skin, all skincare products having some kind of like G GHKC in you. That's how effective it is. With the studies, it's pretty crazy. Wow, yeah, it's crazy stuff. So you think like like uber uber rich people will like create baths and bathe and things? Like that? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, they hey, probably like, already do. That. I mean, I yeah. just think about. I was just thinking about that. I was like, you know, I see how just effective it is for the skin. It. I've used it on my psoriasis. I see how effective it is, and I'm just like, would it be that bad if I just bathed in this stuff? Hey, like the I know it's really <laughs> expensive to like, do that, but hey. I mean, there's got to be some uber rich like king or somebody who yeah. does it. Like, hey, like the guy make me Dune. my uh, GHK the, bath, please. Like the fat dude in know. Dune when he's in that freaking bath. Yes. Maybe that's what that is. Maybe, Maybe that's what that is. The GHK suit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's got to be some some royal person Probably, that, that yep. has got like I'm a, sure they found bathtubs full of it at, 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 at Diddy's house. I'm sure they found it. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, was it a thousand? You found a way to, you found a way to shoehorn Diddy into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's getting weird. Yeah. This I'm, is Epstein part two. I'm not even paying attention too uh, much. That, is it part two or yes. is it, this is, no, no, no. Is it really part two or is this, you're taking the fall for Epstein Well, stuff? they're finding that's that how I feel. Lots of recordings of high, uh, like very famous celebrities doing things. So I I watched a um, interview, and there was a story about Justin Bieber yeah. in particular. Yeah, no, I've he, heard. I've heard. Yeah, yeah, I heard Diddy was like, yeah. So okay, I wish I remember oh, sure. he, he what interview yeah. I heard her, but it was like a close friend of him, and he was basically. Uh, I don't want to say he was defending Diddy, but he was trying to challenge people to think of it as like, listen, somebody taught him mm -hmm. how yeah. to do all this. 
It's not like he just is this person who like that is like that there is a a system to what he was doing and he's not the first one. I hundred percent believe that. Really wish you guys would read the book <laughs> Chaos. I'm gonna keep just like you're uh you're talking about irresistible. <laughs> I'm gonna be that guy that keeps fucking pounding this into everybody's brain. You need to read the book Chaos. Because right. they talk all about this. Yes. And, and this happened a long time ago, dude. And you see how this all these pieces move together uh, it, to the fact where everybody was getting shielded. You start looking at court cases. Just start looking at court cases of people that got absolved of all of their crimes. And you're like, what? They have all this evidence. They you literally used like the entire department from uh, L.A. Uh, police department to, to arrest these very specific pe like people that uh, were suspects for this murder. And then they got off magically. You know, and it's just like you start looking into it, and 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 all these cases point back to intelligence agencies. Yeah, I feel like every they, single one. I feel like what they did is they they take someone like Diddy, and then they work with them and say, "You're gonna do this, you're gonna film this, and we'll take care of you, and you're gonna be the one that hosts the parties, and you know, and you work with us." Now, do you think it starts? So we'll go down to the conspiracy thing with you guys here for a minute. Do you think it starts with like you know way back when Diddy gets caught doing some some shit something bad mm -hmm. right whether it's some younger other music star or something and then the you know agency goes then they blackmail him yeah and then they go hmm oh he likes to do this type of stuff and he's into this There's world like susceptible this. they look for people that are susceptible right and then yeah. and, and, and influential right they can yeah. influence people mm -hmm. right and then yep. they go here's a deal we're gonna go ahead and brush that on the rug but this is yeah. what we want you to. and then that's how that kind of like you think that's how it happens? Could sure. be. Could could very well. I mean, or, makes, or maybe he just parties with them and comes up with them, and they're like, "We'll take care of you, but you take care of us first. You know, who knows? Yeah. But I think he was that guy for the for the music industry. That's for what sure. it seems like. It's well, it's out. just you know, you see all the music execs spontaneously stepping down. You know, it's like. You know, it's happening. All of a sudden, this domino effect is happening. People are deleting all their accounts yes. on Twitter. Celebrities are scrubbing their accounts and pictures there of them afraid. With, with Diddy. They're afraid, and there's a lot of shit that, that has been done that um, is... You know who knows if it's it's just like Epstein. Like you don't you know so many people were involved, but like you don't know if they're ever going to name names. So I have a theory, Justin. So there's two theories. One theory is it's all controlled by these nefarious whatever, and nothing's gonna ever happen. I feel like there are elements within these agencies that are evil, and then there's elements of honest people. And right now well, it's a bit of a battle. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, Here's, I think that there's people that are trying to do things on the inside, and there's people trying to think fight about, it. Think about what is true first, right? So the, the whole like men who stare at goats, true, right? Mm. Like they they did all these weird experiments. They yeah. did all these weird things to try and get an edge psychologically over our adversaries, yeah. right? Or if they're doing it over in Russia, we're going to bring it over here and experiment on our own people which is what they did. And two, the CIA was supposed to never be involved in any domestic anything, surveillance, nothing. That's against their entire code of, of conduct. They, they're they only allowed to look at international threats. And they started turning it in. Because there were threats became here. Because it, yeah. because there's anti-war protests. Yeah. And the, the military industrial complex machine is very much like tied into everything that they are researching and all that stuff. So did you see that person who leaked? So remember the first debate with uh, Trump and um, and Kamala. Um, someone leaked from ABC. Hey, she got all the questions ahead of time. Yeah, we were gonna only fact check Trump. So it was a leaked document, basically saying we fixed the debate. Oh, I didn't know that. The yeah, person that, who leaked that it came out. The person who leaked it got died. a car accident and died. Shut your face. No, no. it's real. No, dude. that's real. That just yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Oh that just my. Happened. Did you know that, Doug? I did not know that. Look oh it my up. God. I yeah, look, look it up. Yeah, uh, fact check. Yeah, it. please make sure that's real. A ABC. We yeah, a leaked document from ABC. Uh, car crash. Let's do that. See if it comes up. And what? then here's so here's the other but, one. But okay, but, but where I was going with that is just like there's different sects of the uh um you know the intelligence agencies that that cover certain areas. And so there's ones that look at cults, there's ones that look at the occult, right? And so like practices within uh, rituals and so what they're doing is they're they're you know kind of allowing things from afar, but they're like monitoring, and so they're seeing how 
uh, these leaders uh, can can have this ultimate control over their followers. And then they take from that as data and they they figure out ways to also like do this to our adversaries or our enemies or get information mm -hmm. and intel from other countries. And, you know, so it's like it, we're actively doing all this stuff. What makes you think it's not a huge leap no. uh, to go from that to then all of a sudden, if you're going to turn that on the American people, like what that looks like. Especially if you're, your job is to quote unquote protect the country. Country and and then you there's consider, no accountability right who's the no enemy? who's who's even looking into their like again you Unlimited just throw budget. conspiracy theory out there and, it, and yeah. people are like ah I just scoff at it well there's I mean look it's it's for right now conspiracy theorists are doing pretty damn well with their predictions uh, to be honest the uh, do you guys see the letter that was released by the guy that was on the golf course that was going to shoot Trump but they found him beforehand mm -hmm. they released his the DOJ released his letter have you guys know what open communication is do you know what that term is. This is a term uh, that is used by like intelligence to say they'll release something as a way to communicate something, but also to be like, it's uh -huh. not us. So the letter literally says in it, you know, essentially there's a $150,000 bounty on Trump's head is what the letter is saying. So it's like, they're putting it out. Be wow. like, look what we found. It's weird. Yeah. And other people are like, why would you put this out? Like, why would you put anything like this out? Yeah. This could get people to, who are on the, on the fence to want to go after Trump even more. Sure. So this is crazy. This is wild. When's the last time you, a, 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 a president had due to two assassinations? Has that ever been yeah. two? Not they like openly three. like that? They said three now. There was one with, they found a, a, a car with with uh, explosives in it. <sighs> so that was another one that happened recently. Oh, this is Did weird. Did you check the these guys? Yeah. You know, here's the thing with these type of fact checks. You got people who are saying that it's true and another people who are saying it's not true. So I, I don't know. What so what we on? can guarantee is that Sal just pissed off half of our audience. Yeah, pissed of off half of our audience. <laughs> Why would I piss? <laughs> <But, laughs> anytime you talk. Do your research. Anytime, <laughs> yes, exactly. Anytime. Do any, your own research. Yeah. Anytime we talk about anything controversial like that, you guarantee 50% of the people will be like, yeah. yes. The other 50% are like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we reading, go again. Reading, yeah, yeah, here we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think the, the bottom line is there's so much dis information out there it's hard to know what is true and what yeah, isn't yeah. Well, i mean stage. that's that's intentional it yeah. is it is yeah. intentional so so, so it can be totally true but you we can don't know argue sure. and debate I mean, that even, but okay out of all of us you're not right i think we all know that i've been the most skeptical here's what i'll say is i'm at least at a place where it's like there's some funny business going on no matter what like i don't right. give a shit. Yeah. there's no way you're convincing me funny business isn't happening even if we just have that as the precedent that's like, it that's that's it i'm not gonna make certain claims i'm good, I'm what good with this, that yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's, there's some funny business yeah there's up. serious like there's some serious like shit isn't just like unfolding this way and there's not stuff being played behind the scenes like yes yeah. i mean to me that's just so obvious it's so obvious super naive to have that uh, opinion it is it, i think it, that's what i think i think that's naive to just think that there's nothing going on and that everybody's in everybody's looking out for the best interest of the american people like that is crazy yeah. if you think that i mean and that's just simply by being around enough of these people that get put in this position, like the 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 type of person that's it that that like once you're around Who would that want yeah, that the, position, yeah, yeah, a crazy person, yeah, Every not just not all these narcissist. altruistic people you think, no, you know? no, <laughs> no, oh yeah, they always want to help people and stuff, like oh oh sure they do, yeah, they get crazy enriched every year that they yeah. they work doing all this stuff, you know, like no, it ain't it ain't about you guys, like it's that so to me like that right there is like the big red flag is like. It really isn't about the American people, and but what it is about is making you think that, is making people feel that way to, to create the divide, so people feel like they need to def defend All their team. All you have to do is give is make people feel like they're choosing themselves. So you give them two options that you're happy with. Okay, it's it's no different. Look, you do this with your kids all the time. You want your kids to eat something. Here's what you do: you give them two options, and you want them to eat both. What do you want tonight for dinner, buddy? Carrots or celery? Yeah. I'll take the carrot. Now that's, he feels like he picked, but you pick from the choices see, that I see, see alternate advance clothes. Yes. Either either yeah. clothes is good yep. for you. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's an alternate advance. Oh, you this or that. Either one you either one you choose, son, I'm happy with you. That's it. <laughs> and so you know, you know that whoever they pick, you're gonna be okay. 
So I don't know. Yeah. Although all these assassination assassination attempts makes me think they don't want this guy. Well, that's what I. So to me, that's again why I feel like it'd be naive to not think this for the first time ever. I think we have a person running who not everybody like the. the a lot of people don't. Yeah, that don't yeah. want him on board. You know what I'm saying? And it feels like for the first time ever, there's just there's actually some people that want that person in in yeah. office, but the people that are really making the decisions behind. I mean, to me, it's like. Won't it? I, won't it be so obvious if like he doesn't win this 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 election? I feel like it's if he doesn't, and Kamala Harris, who was the most hated VP in history, after after Sleepy Joe wins, beats <laughs> beats him. I don't know, dude. Like, to come on, most, yeah, uh, like amazing. Like, are are, 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 turn of are we are we going to see record votes yeah. again for yeah. her? Yeah. Like, is that yeah. possible? Like, Hmm. Here, here's what I want. I want a gov I want a government so small. I don't care who wins. That's what I want. Yeah. I want one that's so small. Put whoever you want. They can't do anything to me anyway. It's such a small government. I feel like we should have went. We should be like. We should be by state. Yeah. We're so big, and and that's how you keep government small. Is that every state has their own like. And, and then outside of that, don't even matter. It's like you got like everybody. It's like fifty countries. Have you seen yes, it like it's like <laughs> yeah. it's literally. I really believe it should be ran like fifty countries. I really do believe yeah. that. I believe it should be ran like fifty countries and. That way, you're not that far away from right where every all the decisions are being made. You're a drive away from the people that are making those decisions. Like this, like you know, a group of people in one part of the country is making the decisions for all yeah, the country. It gets away from us. It's like let's it does. keep it. The community aspect needs to be there and be involved. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely think that there should be, uh, and that's one way to shrink it would be to to divide it up yeah. into all the all the states. Yeah, that would be that would be a trap. Do you see? Was it uh, Argentina? You think so? You think it'd be a disaster? Yeah, I do. They're so intertwined. There's so much uh, trade. You would get like these trade wars that would probably start happening. California would be like, well, you know, we'll put some tariffs on this, whatever. And then they'd be like, well, we'll return it back. And then next thing you know, you live in a state uh, where you can't get fruits and vegetables and all you have are potatoes. Because the other states won't sell them to you. And you got, you're like, you got, and you, and you got weird you get smugglers coming yeah, in. Dude, like, you got weird markets all the shine runs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? You could create a black market for potatoes. Yeah, and so dude, that'd be kind dude of oh, bro, how funny was that? I, I, I just remembered. How funny was that video I sent you guys of my son? Oh, so her first thing in the morning. <laughs> I died. Bro. It was. I, he's like this. Hey, lollipop. Hey, listen. I, and Wait, I where is that at? Where's the camera at? Where's so we have a, a, a ring camera yeah, in his yeah. room, okay? Uh, and we don't always have it up, but thankful, thankful we had it up that, that morning. And my wife gets an alert. It's like 445. It, what, 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 the, oh, it's 445. Maybe, okay, in the morning. Wow. And what he did was he went out of his room. He snuck again into her purse. He knows she has lollipops in there. I, I told you guys, these are for church. He went in there and then he went back in his room. And so I get a text from her. It's a recording of the recording. And what, is he's sitting on the edge of his bed by himself. It's like 5 a.m. And he's mm. just he's <laughs> <laughs> by himself. Like, oh, this is awesome. Yes. Oh, having the time of his life. You could tell the look on his face, too. He's like just, so excited. Oh, bro. my like, God. Oh, this is a good lollipop. <laughs> but he did confess. He I was going to ask, so how do you handle something like that? Because there's obviously there's a part of you that's laughing, right? You're just dying laughing. Well, because he there's a part of you who's like, okay, we need to definitely uh, get a hold of this mischievous behavior, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's like, how do you, how do you? It's age appropriate, right? For a four year old, they're going to do stuff like. So he comes up and he's like, Mama, I uh, I was really sneaky and I went oh, in your purse. Oh, and, he's just straight. Yeah, up, yeah, he told sold him. himself out. She's like, oh, know. she's like, you can't, don't do that. Go in my purse. So now she's like, we got to hide them better and let's move my purse to a different place. That way, if he does it again, he won't find him. But that video is so funny. <laughs> He's sitting on the edge of the bed, just like you uh, so happy, dude. so happy. So who's who's more guilty in in like those type of situations to uh, like default to laughing about it and like not parenting it? Like, so who out of you two is would more, laugh? Yeah, yeah, more likely to be like, gosh, you know, we'd, we'd be more likely to laugh if we were together because then her and I would look at each other. And, we just start laughing. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's pretty good. I would be pretty good. I think. I got to think. How would that? How would I react to that? I think I'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, well, that's why I think I, it's Especially like watching I keep, the video. Yeah. Like, yeah when Max, his little feet are like you know. Yeah, when Max does yeah. stuff that I behaviors I don't want to encourage, but then I'm like, part of it's kind of funny. Is just like you know, like you know, just it's hard to like. Okay, this is the time where I'm parenting right now. You know, not, not <laughs> like thinking how hilarious this is. And he always says it too. I I, I was sneaky. I was like, okay. I mean, you know, you're sneaky. You probably yeah. shouldn't be. I mean, I told you guys a long time ago on the show, one of the biggest mistakes I made was, uh, 
you know, telling him like, oh, just the boys, right? And so now, no, like, says that oh my God, all the time when we're like, him and I are just doing stuff like, we, we don't tell mom, right? And I'm like, no, we just, <laughs> listen. And Katrina's been getting mad at me. She's like, you know, you need to tell my son that he does not keep secrets from me. I'm like, I'm not telling him to keep secrets. I made a mistake one time to be like, just the boys. 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 And boys. now like, I mean, literally, it could be anything. Like, hey, you want to go for a ride? You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'll let him sit in the front seat. Like I put his car seat in the front seat. And uh, Katrina used to get mad about that, yeah. right? So I do it anyways. And she yeah. goes, and he'd be like, well, don't tell mom. And I'm like, no, you can tell your mom. Um, she knows I'm letting you sit there, dude. We've already talked about dude. it. Like, so I definitely created that monster. Oh you know? yeah, we had that. It, they always roll you under the bus, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah always, always, no, always. We I'm come like, walking in the door. Hey, hey yeah, pal. Yeah, we'll come walking in the door. And you'll be like, yeah. Daddy, let me sit in the front. Right yeah, 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 right yeah, like, yeah. What? What's going on, bro? Yeah, I was like, my dude, there's no way. Anyways, like yeah. you're gonna know. Like he's gonna tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it's funny. Speaking of uh, crazy random things, so uh, there was this court case, like. Uh, that uh, had to happen, uh, I think it might have been over COVID, but it was like they couldn't show up in person. And so this guy, like, this is something that my junior high brain would have came up with, like, oh, this is going to be hilarious, right? This guy writes in his handle, like, is his name Buttfucker3000. <laughs> A court case, a judge. He's he's going over and like starts the proceeding, and then sees his name, and he's like, and he reads it. Yes, you read it. And he's like, he's like, what is, is this? Your name? Who's this name? And he's, they start like getting into it. He's like, oh my god, I didn't know that you like read the name, and like he's like trying to backpedal. And he everything. must have forgotten up there. Yeah. He probably did, oh god. Oh, I was dying, <laughs> dude. I'm like, that's like that the reminds worst. me of everybody's first email address. I kid, yeah. mine. I still get, dude. It's it's still attached to my original account, and every once in a while, there's like it's through Apple, and it's uh, crazy chicks for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like I mean it's how old were you like, bro 19 18 yeah, yeah. You like, wait, hold on you were 18 you did dude. that yeah like 18 or 19 I did that That's a little maybe 20 21 tops crazy 20. chicks for me yeah yeah it was, it's crazy yeah. hey, you can send me email and then What's the number email? four and then me and it was the handle I made for like literally it was like the very first Hotmail account oh, or something, God. which is also attached to like my very first Apple purchase or whatever. Oh, yeah. So anything Apple related, it goes links back. So every once in a while, I'll log into something and be like, crazy chicks for me. And I'm like, oh my God, dude. And <laughs> of course, because I'm not tech savvy. It's like been stuck there forever. <laughs> my mom for the long, I think I told you guys this, my mom for the longest time, because she, my brother made my mom's email because she wasn't tech savvy or whatever. And this, this was in the late 90s. Maybe my, so my brother was like 13, 14. So she's like, make me an email. I want an email. I was like, okay, mom. So hers was, I don't remember what the full thing was, but the beginning of it was Italian rage. <laughs> she's like, excuse me. That's her email. So she had to give people any flying chonclas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Italian rage. <bro. laughs> <laughs> she stopped using it like recently. Oh my hilarious. god! Oh, that's oh good. my god! We used kids. to do stupid stuff like that. Oh, that's a good time. Hey, so. uh, we're we're supposed to talk about Organifi. They have a starter kit. I want to hear about the starter kit. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that it's in our notes. Doug, do you know about the Organifi starter kit? Is it just like a like a sample kit of all their stuff? Uh, Which is so, brilliant. Yes. Yeah, so let's see. You get seven days each of green juice, red juice travel packs, 30 days of essential magnesium capsules, and a shaker bottle. This, Perfect. Hey, this came from us. Yeah, I know. This, this was, was our I, idea. This was an started. idea I gave him a long time ago. What's the cost of that, Doug? Do you know what the price I is I love those that? single well, packets you can I'll just yeah, dump in. That. That's a great idea. That we brilliant. Came, that, we, that we came up with. Yes, a brilliant <laughs> idea. So brilliant. I'm pretty sure it was mine. I you know why I, was, I know why, You know why I know it was yours? Because uh, we used to sell starter, starter yes. packs at 24. Yeah, yes. I know. That's why when I saw it, I, I think Katrina actually told me they finally implemented it. So that's what I'm pretty sure that's what that's from. Yeah, it's thirty nine ninety five. But if you use uh, our code, which is Mind Pump, I believe, you get twenty percent off. Of there that. you go. So you get seven days of green juice, yeah. seven days of red juice, thirty days of the essential magnesium, and then you get the shaker bottle. That's not bad. Mm. It's a great. It's a great. Idea. Try it out that way. Yeah. No, it's a that's a great that's a great idea. I mean, that's kind of, that's exactly what we used to do in the gym industry. It used to be a fifty dollars starter kit. Mm -hmm. And in there had the shakes, the bars, like yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. So if you, people could try it out. It was just a brilliant way to introduce all your supplements. I to wanted to client. bring something up to you, Adam, mm. about your, your, your filming, your workouts and your, your, I watched uh, a little bit of one today, this morning with you and you were doing the zone one priming um, mm -hmm. on your, uh, as part of your warm up. <laughs> yeah. Rough. And no, no, yeah, it was tough, but uh, you know, priming and I wanted to get into this and I have an example of this. Priming just literally means what it sounds like. It, it it sets the central nervous system up to fire in a more beneficial, effective way for the activity that you're about to do. Right. Okay. So 
if you're about to bench press or squat or overhead press, a warm up just gets everything warm and, and generally wakes up the central nervous system. I mean, that's what a good warm up should do. Priming is far more targeted, and you're looking at okay, I specifically personally need to work on you know, holding my shoulder blades back when I do a press or maintaining core stability when I do a deadlift or my ankle mobility isn't great. They're really tight. So when I squat, my knees want to turn out. So I'm going to prime my ankle so that doesn't happen. Okay. So what you're doing, you're telling the central nervous system to do something better so that when you get into your workout, it's just way more effective. And I have a great example of how people have used the, because it's real. Priming is real. This is how the central nervous system works. I have an example of how um, people have used priming to sell products. Do you guys remember? It wasn't how long? How long? How long ago was it where they were sending those bracelets and they were showing baseball players wore them and athletes? Oh, like, the oh, copper this, ones and stuff. It was. I don't know if it was copper, but it had the like energy this, like flow. A magnet. Supposed to. It had like this little thing in it that's like this. This balances out. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, so it's to move energy. Yeah. Yes. Way. Yeah, you guys yeah, remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. And there were some pro baseball players. Yeah, yeah. They, they were. They were. Yeah. <laughs> they were yeah. slinging those. It was yeah. complete crap. Yeah, it was, it was complete. There's nothing. Okay. However, when you would go to the mall. There would be all these, you would see these little booths selling these bracelets and they'd have a picture of the pro baseball player, whoever it was. And then they would do, have you do a test to prove how effective the bracelet was. And this is what they would do. Yeah. They'd have you stand on one foot, you would stick an arm out, they'd push down on your arm and you would tip over. Then they'd say, now put on this bracelet. You'd put it on, you'd stand up, they'd push your arm down and you would be remarkably more stable. Yeah. And they'd be like, look, it's the bracelet. And you would believe it because you're like, dude, he just pushed me. Five seconds ago, and I fell over. Yeah, the second yeah. time, yeah. I felt far more stable. Yeah. It got to be the bracelet. No, yeah. what he did was he primed you. He woke up the first. He time. primed you with the first one. Your body knew what to do now. Oh, right. got to maintain my balance. Try it a second time, much better. Yeah, but yeah. they use this as a yeah. way to sell you the fire crappy. off your stabilizer. Now, what's the second time? What's funny is they did that to me. So this was a long time ago. This was, I think, it was fifteen years. It must have been 10, 15 years ago when these were being sold. I went to the mall. And I knew it was baloney. And so I had the guy explain it to me. And then he did the test on me. And he goes, did you see that second time? I'm like, yeah, because you tried it the first time. What do you mean? And I said, my central nervous system now knows what you should have seen the look on his face. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, yeah. I don't think he knew. The move would have been like this after he did it on your right arm. Go, no, 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 no. Put the bracelet on my left arm. Yeah. Now yeah let's yeah, try it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> or put it on me now the first time. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. see what happens. <laughs> but that's an example of how priming works is that your, your, your CNS figures out what it needs to do. And so you can, you can guide it with proper priming. So you were kind of explaining that in your video yeah. uh, and why you were doing it. Cause you were hitting shoulders. Yeah. 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 Anytime I do shoulder and chest stuff, it's really, especially important there because I, that's, you think of all the areas that um, I've had to work on um, for, you know, just proper alignment, better mobility, uh, the upper cross syndrome type of deal where the shoulders are rounded forward. I have the forward. I mean, you could see it glaring in that video. Like it definitely like looking at it like, oh, I mean, one of the best parts about this getting documented in, in video. People is, are going to see improvements across the board. Yeah. They're going to see that too. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be good to show that, right? To show the, <laughs> show the people as we go through this. I think that's the part too. I just want to, I'm like trying to communicate that as I go through. Like no, by no means am I trying to, uh, come off like I'm in a in a perfect position. There's a lot of stuff that I got to wear. I mean, I got an injury now, and I've got you know posture stuff that I got to deal with. And I think this is an area where I I just um, we uh, we oversimplify that and we overcomplicate the the lifting part. It's like, man, I haven't really been doing anything. So making sure I I touch the weights and lift some weights is uh, is going to send a signal to build muscle working on all my posture stuff to improve my movement is only going to also benefit me muscle wise. Mm -hmm. uh, and then really comes down to making good food choices and hitting your target. That's been the biggest one right now for me that I'm like really trying to hammer home to people is I am actively going after protein right now. And I am day in and day out missing. I mean, like with intent trying to get to 200 grams and it is hard. It is hard. Yeah. It's like there's days I'll have two, Protein shake meals, still hard to get 200. So I just think that so many people that don't track don't realize how they miss their protein intake. And everybody thinks they eat so much. And it's like, yeah, show me a month of your eating tracking and show me that you crush protein every single Like, I, I'm not saying like I haven't had a day where you crush it. Like, sure. But to consider, like, all it takes for me is getting high behind on breakfast. If I don't get up and set the day with intent of I'm going to go right now, go get 30 to 50 grams of protein before it turns nine o'clock, 
I'm going to be behind all day mm -hmm. long, and it's going to be really tough to catch up if I if I don't do. So that. you're doing four fifty gram meals is what you're trying to do? Yeah, you know I'm reminded again too on because that's kind of satiating. Why I like why I like eating small meals so many times a day. It's just easier for me. It's like it's an easier strategy for me than uh, than expecting I'm going to get it all in one one big meal mm -hmm. or bulk. So I'm I'm back to eating like five five meals a day. So I'm right around five right now. Okay. So, and they, they range, like some of them are, I mean, I, I have some. So it's 40 grams of protein each, basically. Yeah, average. But like, you know, my my, my go-to late night snack right now is the the two triple zero uh, Okios or whatever that brand is, yogurt, Greek yogurts. Oh, using the creamy? I got one. So, uh, oh yeah. I bought one. Either, have you Now, have you done it right yet? Have you done it right yet? I think so. Okay. I think so. We did. I mean, you'll know. It's, we did coconut like milk um, and protein powder. And I did it one the one in the can because I wanted some fat in it, right? Yeah. And I froze it, and then we, you know, put it in there and turn it on. Which I, it must mix in air or something. <laughs> it's wild, right? It doesn't yeah. make it doesn't make sense. It's like how's this possible if this is just milk and protein yeah. powder? And it turned into ice cream. I'm so mad that I haven't been able to get a partnership. So for the audience, we're, we're not even getting paid for this. I know for the audience, just so the audience knows, yeah, I've been working diligently on the back end, trying to get through to them to work a partnership out for literally six months now. Cause that's about how long I've had it. Cause I, it blew my mind when I first started using it. It's gotta be, it's the way that it blends it. Is it, it mixes air or something in there, whips it up to create the texture. Cause that's what it is. Ice cream is all about texture. So if you got protein shake in there, you know, with with milk or whatever, so there's a little bit of fat, yeah. and then you whip it the right way, so it's and it's like it's ice cream. I'm gonna have to mess with that, yeah, because we were actually talking about getting one of those old cranks in and doing like old school uh, vanilla get, with that. Get the ninja cream, bro. yeah. I'll try that. Tell you right now. Yeah. Sweat your ass first. off. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember doing that as a kid, like down in uh, SoCal, like one of my like great aunts or whatever, like had us all like making vanilla. And Did like, you really? And yeah. Yeah. And it came out really good. It was tasty, but, uh, it was old school crank and he did it in this barrel. And so there's, uh, added ice. there's, yeah. a, there's a bunch of, um, settings on it. And there's yeah. two settings that I'd like to know the difference between gelato and ice cream. Cause one is gelato. One is ice cream. What's the difference? Italian mode. Well, I know, but what is it? What is I it? Think it's it has to do with the music? density, <laughs> the density of the ice cream. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled "Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep." It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. I think there's actually less air in gelato. I'm not sure exactly. Can you but find out? I will. I'll give well, you. I would love to know. Gelato is also. I mean, that, that, even though that has nothing to do with the machine, but gelato is. You, they use honey to sweeten. They so, do. Yeah, yeah. That's like one of the secret sauces of gelato. Is it's used you honey. No, I would know. Of, of course. What do you like better? Ice cream or gelato? Yes. Yeah, start I, a business. I like gelato a lot. Actually, gelato seems to sit uh, better with me. Mm. So um, than than ice cream. But I mean, now you've been to Italy. Yeah, you had it there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. no, it's it's uh, it's yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Eating it here is not the same. Just like what were we just talking about? Something else that's not the same over here is like when you eat at the real place. Gelato okay. Oh, okay. So gelato milk, uses more cream. milk, less cream, and often doesn't contain eggs. Gelato is denser and silkier. Ice cream is softer and lighter. They also use honey. Oh, gelato is churned more slowly than ice cream, which introduces which introduces less air. Oh. And gelato is served slightly warmer. You know, it's funny. Every time I say gelato, I, have to, I say gelato. Where's I want to say it properly, it? Mm -hmm. but then I sound like a douche. So I say <laughs> gelato. Where's, it's gelato. So flavor. Gelato's denser <laughs> texture allows yeah. it to pack more flavor. And it's yeah, often it. made with natural ingredients. So it's, they use honey to sweeten. I don't know why it's mm. not. It doesn't say that. Because mm. I've looked mm. that up before. It's, uh, oh, it's, mm. it's. Huh? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Scroll, scroll back up, Doug, because there was something else I saw about there. Oh, so ice cream has higher fat content. Than gelato. Ah, hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, when you go to ice cream places in Italy, it's like a big deal, man. Like over here, it's for like little kids. Over there, it's like gourmet, like yeah, the, the presentation and yeah. stuff. You're like, this is hmm. this is wild. Yeah, yeah. there is. There used to be a place in Willow Glen. I don't know if it's still there. Or still not. is. Is it? There's yeah. a, it's a really good gelato yeah, yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. little Italy actually down the street. Do from you up remember? Here. I don't know. We were actually we were just getting started together, and uh, 
when we first started the podcast, when we when we were down there, mm. and I was hanging out with my buddy, my buddy that has all the gambling problems when I was gambling a lot, and I was hey, <laughs> you're about too, to say his name. Aren't I, you? I'm not going to roll with the bus. I'm not going to roll with <laughs> the bus. That's like such that. an yeah. <laughs> So my buddy, he's just like he's a good buddy of mine. I love him. I love he's him. Meth addict. But he's like we all we all have <laughs> had these, we've all had these friends that are just like not a good influence on you. Like yeah. I was gambling way too much and eating gelato every day <laughs> that I hung out. Wow, with. those two things. Yes, yeah, so he's an Italian wow. guy, right? So like yeah. we would just he and you know that was my weeks. Spot, you know what I'm saying? You so become fat sounds like yes, dude. Yeah. Yes, dude. <laughs> That's a so, bad recipe. Yeah, yeah. Dude. For like a year, I was doing both gambling and gelato every day. It was very, very rough time. Your dopamine life. was through the roof. Yeah, through the roof, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks, dude. That's, yeah, I remember that. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, Justin, are you the one that put panda dogs up on Yeah, well, yeah thank you for bringing You're that welcome. up. You're yeah, welcome. I, I think I know what this is. Yeah. I well, saw this. Okay, so yeah, this was uh, hilarious because like, <laughs> in China, yes, it they is. got busted because they in, in the zoo, they just tried to pawn off the, like, they had these pandas. <laughs> but they, they just were spray painted these dogs. Shut your face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at Come they're on, like, give me a like picture. They're like chows. Come on, give me a that picture. That they are. They're like chows that they this. painted like, their eyes and the, like their you know ears they, and everything to have markings of the panda. Oh, look at the panda bear. Like, yeah, look at it. It's they, like, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. is that? It's because a, like they, they like a panda passed away or they didn't have it. I think I don't just, know what the rationale was. They just but, don't have pandas. Yeah, so like they're but they low want on to pandas come, and yeah. thought come, they could just kind of throw that in there. Yeah, and, didn't they do? They nobody got, noticed. They got caught putting people in costumes too, pretending to be animals. You see that? No, but I, that was another point. Oh I my had. god, bro! <laughs> was, yeah. Wow, it, it kind of passes a yeah, little like bit, it, like a little <laughs> bit. They're they're fluffy and kind of. Oh my god, bro! <laughs> Except they got a big old tail. Stop it. This yeah. is a real thing. Yeah. Can I see a video or is it just it's pictures? Just pictures. Oh my God. They I, cut it. Oh, there's one. They, they had, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. That's a dog, bro. <laughs> bro. Imagine all the, ki all the kids that have been fooled. <laughs> bro. Hey, by You can easily kid. fool kids, dude. Uh, like, they're not going to know. Yeah. Kids are, kids are dumb. Yeah. Dude. dude. Yeah. It's great. That yeah. is so funny. Yeah. That's that's hilarious. I, I saw. Yeah, somebody did that. Uh, made their dog look like a lion. Did you hear about that? He went for a walk. Uh, why? Uh, that's called a, the authorities on him. Oh, really? Yeah, because it looked like a lion. I mean, there's people. That's a real thing. To that's actually I've like seen a, that's, that for that's Halloween. A, yeah, it's like yeah. a dog cut. Like people can ask mm. for their dogs. To are get you guys dressed? Are you know, you're done with Halloween, right? Your kids are too old now for that. They just, I, they just yeah. go egg houses at the same. Yeah, time exactly. Yeah, they just cause <laughs> havoc. Yeah. And I mean, we'll do parties and stuff, but that's so you're done dressing up. I'm done. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Why? It's fun, bro. Dressing up for kids with the kids. Oh. Oh, with them, yeah. I mean, we'll see. They, you know, they may have like they want to go to a party or go to their friend's house, and they might dress. Up. Halloween we'll is a such a great holiday when you're a kid, and then you're a teenager. It's kind of cool. Then your twenties, it's like party your ass off. Then it sucks until you have kids and it's fun again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's a lot of fun again. That's all right. We're doing uh, the whole family. We're all dressing up like Paw Patrol. My son and my daughter are super into it. I've uh, got the nice. stuff. You know that, right? I already, I bought them. It's, oh. you know, it's nothing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I still got the vest there. Who are you going to be? Are you going to be Ryder? No, gonna be... I'm Marshall. Oh, for you're some actually, reason, oh, you're one of the characters. Oh, so for some the... reason, my son's like, you're going to be Marshall. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, we let Max pick too, so I got lucky and he just picked it's Ryder. Like, oh, that's easy. It's an actual person. Mm. Yeah. yeah, Marshall Marshall is the firefighter one. Yeah, oh, the you know firefighter. all the names. Oh, of course I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chase, Marshall. Yeah, no, it's I know. just a little far for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're we're going to be, uh, like Courtney and I, we're going to be uh, married with children. <laughs> oh, oh my god is that a party Al or something Bundy. Or yeah we're going to a party yeah. oh my god that's good yeah so it's a, it's a good time with yeah, yeah. we're going to be fun. in Disney World for I can't wait to take Max to Disney World for Halloween I was not going to take him because, have you been to Disney World no it's totally different than Disneyland I know everyone tells me it's, it's like so it's like much Disneyland much. on steroids right so, well yeah well, it's, it's like three different parks right? that's what I mean I, that's, everyone says it's like have like four Disneylands yeah, in, like in four. Disney World is like that so that's what I hear yeah Epcot Center is crazy which I'm sure I'll experience none of that I think literally we'll probably stay in one little area that he likes that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> I mean I wouldn't have like Katrina originally so when she knew we were flying to Florida She's like, hey, I'm going to see how close you're to Disney World. And maybe I'm, going. I'm like, we're not taking Max to Disney World. I'm not taking him now. He's The kid doesn't even do, what's that little stupid theme park over here that's like for- like, He doesn't like the rides. Yeah, he doesn't but like the rides. there's so many things to see. It though. doesn't matter. I was like, I'm not going to do it. I said, we're not doing it. And then she goes, Disney World's putting on a whole oh, Halloween. Oh, he likes Halloween. That's right. And I'm like, okay, my son is oh, obsessed yeah. with Halloween. Oh, yeah. Obsessed with Halloween. We read He'll Halloween books all year long. We watch Halloween yeah. content. Oh, I'm so glad it's finally Halloween, so it feels appropriate because- Does he like scary stuff too? Not really. Okay. So it's like he likes he, Halloween, but not. Yeah, scary. yeah. Like he like, like skeletons and stuff. things like that, but it yeah. needs to be cartoonish and okay. playful and funny yeah. and like. So there's like certain, but if it's at all, I've, and I've tried like testing like some of the like it, like 
borderline kid yeah. scary yeah. stuff. Yeah. And Here's he, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I've not done that, Justin. Okay, good. <laughs> I've not scored. I haven't scored him yeah, for yeah. life. Dress yourself yeah, up like you're really. No, 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 I haven't done <laughs> that. Seen your nightmares. But he, <laughs> wow. he does. He really loves. Uh, and then once everybody starts decorating, and our, our neighborhood goes all out, so it's my, cool. My, he, son's, my son every night so far, because I guess Halloween's coming up, and so he's like, T tell me, Papa, tell me a really spooky, scary ghost story and i'm like really you want a scary one he's like yeah tell me a really i'm like i don't know i think you might get scared he goes no no no. make it as scary as you can i'm like like how scary he goes a hundred that's like whatever he says whenever so all right yeah i'll give you a scary story so we're in bed and i put him in bed <coughs> and i start telling him the story about this cave and it's like dark and somebody goes in with their flashlight the flashlight turns off and they hear noises and they see the and he stops me hold on hold on papa that's too scary. <laughs> so, okay, hold on. I'm not done. Maybe not 100. 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's what I do. I just, This is what I do with him. Whatever I'm telling him, I can tell when he gets a little too scared. And then here's the back out. It's a little hack for dads. You're telling your kid a story. He wants to scary or she wants to scary. They need to back out. If you add farts or poop, it's an easy oh, way Oh, God. That's like... Easy way out. Now, here's yeah. a problem with that. Easy way out. It's a scared. Me, it's a dark. Hey, and all of a sudden, you make Let a me fart. tell you yeah. the problem yeah. with that hack is because yeah. that's a hack that we've used. Oh, right? yeah, dude. Now... He laughs. At every... Funny. Like, so Max goes, uh, when we read at night, he's like, make it funny, daddy. Yeah. I'm like, this is not even a funny story. It's like a heartwarming, like... <laughs> Yeah. You know, like we have this book. It's yeah. like it's called Maximus, and it's written. It's like a daddy's love to his son. It's like nothing's funny about it. It's like very yeah. heartfelt, and like you have any, to add farts. yeah. But it has to, yes, I have to add <laughs> yeah. farts and yeah. butt. If I say butt and farts, <laughs> it's oh, so funny. Yeah. And I try and tell him like Max, Those there's are books that are appropriate punches. for humor, and then there's books that are. This is heartfelt. Let daddy read it to you like it's supposed to. No, no, no. Make it funny, uh, <laughs> yeah, or I'll, mommy read it. Mommy will make it. Mommy, you make it funny, and then she's got to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you make yeah, he wants everything to be funny. So yeah. it's just like, oh my god! No, that's just how I back out of scary stuff. So as soon as it gets scary, I go on the you know the fart angle, and he laughs, and then we're good, oh, and we go to bed. So funny, <laughs> it's a good time. That's so funny. I have a shout out. So uh, um, <clears throat> the uh, I was tagged, and I actually seen this guy's content before. Uh, a listener of Mind Pump, big fan of Mind Pump for a long time, and he uh, where's our executive thread because I just put it in there. He's got a podcast, and I think his podcast passed us in the rankings. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So he he is I doing saw that good for him. Yeah. He's doing he's doing really uh, doing really well, and uh, you know it, it, it attributes a lot of the, his his trainer knowledge <clears throat> from listening to the show. And so it was a really exciting day for him to do that, which is awesome and super super pumped for him to see yeah, that. Ride so, that temporary wave, dude. <laughs> Stop oh. it, dude. Why you, gonna, why you gotta ruin it, bro? I was like, I was not gonna say anything about the rankings I'm and how it up, works. Dude, like, like, hey, <laughs> good job. We're you know, fucking for, for that, right for that there. temporary boost. <laughs> yeah, like, like, see if you That's all right, we'll give him one right now. Yeah, yeah, no, I hope I'm gonna blow him up right now. The fact try that you're even on the charts. That's a big deal. It's a big ass deal. It's a big ass deal. It's a very big deal. I'm gonna try and give him. He does a good job, too. Yeah, I'm gonna try and give him the number one. Fucking Justin. So competitive. You can't help it. You can't help it, bro. He can't help himself. Yeah. Help himself. Sorry, I'm on my What bully. thread did I send that in? Where's the where's the thread where we're uh Did you lose the name? Higher Up Wellness. Higher Up Wellness. Higher Up Wellness. That's his Instagram handle. I believe that's also the name of his podcast. Um and I can tell just by his content that he's put out on his Instagram that he's adding tremendous value. Great communicator, uh, really understands health and fitness really well. Uh, so I imagine his podcast is going to be really good too. I promised that I'd give it a listen and check it out too. So check him out on Instagram. Check it out his podcast, uh, Higher Up Wellness. Brain.fm plays music and sounds in your ears that changes the state of your mind. Your brain it actually changes your brain waves. This is Built by scientists, shown and proven in studies to actually work. So what does it feel like? Well, you put on their focus, five to ten minutes later, you feel focused. Or you put on meditation or sleep, you put on those sounds, and it really works. Anyway, don't trust me. Go try it out yourself for free for 30 days. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Chris from Colorado. What's up, Chris? How can we help you? Hey, gentlemen, I have a question for Adam. Um, however, um, before I do that, I just had to give a shout out to Sal. I had the opportunity to hear you on another podcast, um, share your testimony on how you found out that God was real. I really, really appreciated it. And I sure hope that it invites others to find out for themselves. So uh, thank you. And I hope I get to hear it more often and hear more depth in that story somewhere else. Thank you. I can't. Um, I, can't I can't hear it anymore. It makes me emotional every time I hear that story. <laughs> it's too. It's powerful. I, uh, it's awesome, uh, Adam. I'm curious about your experience with GLP-1. 
I've been two weeks into taking five units and I'm having, well, now I'm three weeks. I'm having intense low blood sugar crashes. I also have to force down protein and my recovery scores on whoop have been in the red since I started GLP one. I'm also doing aesthetic at this, like modified aesthetic at the same time. And I'm wondering how you handled that much volume while in a calorie set deficit. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm would- 193 pounds. No, 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 no. Uh, there's no way I would be doing uh, anything even close. So this is actually, Chris, why we wrote uh, MAPS GLP-1. So we wrote it because this is what I, what I experienced, what you're like describing right now. Uh, I, I experienced that and I would tell the guys, hey, these these people need to scale back the volume and intensity so much that I don't see anybody doing this right. And so we wrote Maps GLP one, and most people will, will open open that and go, "Oh my God, this is like hardly anything." And it's like, "Yeah, your calories, which it sounds like, are so low that you training even remotely close to that intense, all you're potentially going to do is sacrifice muscle. You're you're not going to build. And really, what we're trying to do on a GLP one like that, where someone's trying to really reduce." is to, to spare muscle. Like, can I just keep what I've worked before while I am in this dramatic cut? So that's, and, and then we're, I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you uh, what you should do with your, your uh, dosage. But since then, I've completely uh, reduced down to like a micro dose. Uh, and so in a micro dose, I have found that I can, it, it actually cancels out the noise they say you know where you have the desires for sugar and all these bad habits like i actually have had no cravings by taking a microdose, but yet it still leaves room for me to have somewhat of an appetite so i can eat and actually hit my 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 protein targets and so that would be my concern mm-hmm. with you is if you notice you notice blood sugar already you notice your recovery is shit and this is all because uh, such a low calorie with the with paired with the over application of intensity and volume. And so something needs to adjust, whether that's, uh, you know, talking to your doctor and him, you know, telling you, yeah, go ahead and cut back on the, the total amount you're doing or really reducing the, the volume and intensity of the workout. Most likely it's probably both. Are you finding with, um, micro dosing, is that, uh, do you know what that dose is in units? So out of curiosity, are you, which one are you using, Chris? Are you on trisepatide or semaglutide? Semaglutide. Yeah. So, and I'm so, taking 0. 0.25, 0. 0.25. So, so the units don't, they're not going to translate because we don't know what yeah. your milligrams are per dose. Adam was also using trisepatide, so it's going to be different. Um, so I don't okay. know. Yeah. So, um, and, and also this is something that you would want to ask your doctor, but if you're, if you're eating really low calorie, you're choking food down because you can't, you can't, you know, hit your protein, your training should be super, super, super minimal. And, and that's why you're, that's why you're so overtrained. It's like you're, you're eating, do, do you even, do you have any idea of what your calories and protein is at? I've been forcing 2,500 cal- calories a day. And then my protein, I'm hitting minimum 150. I weigh 193. But I'm trying to get down to, I'm at 15% body fat and I'm, it's kind of experimenting. I want to see if I can get to 10%. That's my real goal. I've never been there before. And I thought this might be a help. No, where uh, where did you get your peptide from, by the way? Who who prescribed you uh, this peptide? Um, my doctor, he, uh, she's been doing my TRT as well. Okay. Yeah. I, so I, it's just my opinion. I don't think you're a good candidate for, mm-hmm. uh, to go from 15 to 10. Uh, that wouldn't be like, there's no point in using a GLP one at all, unless you have maybe pre-diabetic. That might be another, well, I'll indication. tell you, I'll tell you what will happen to you. It is the same thing that happened to me. So I lost 30 pounds, half of that or more was muscle. So because it's just I'm not getting enough nutrients. So that's what will happen to you is you might lose some weight on the scale, but where you're at calorie wise uh, and protein, uh, you're gonna it's just gonna drop weight on the scale and you're gonna end up losing as much muscle yeah. as you are I, fat. I just, would I mean there's other peptides that would be more appropriate yeah. for someone like you to go to fifteen to to ten. Uh like a, a growth hormone releasing peptide, uh, you know, Tessa Marilyn would probably be more appropriate. 
um, for someone like you. But uh, yeah, I, 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 and this, this was my fear with GLP ones is that, that they were going to get prescribed to people who were going to go from healthy to, to shredded or, you know, Hey, I need to lose a little extra for summer. Um, it's just, that's not what it does. Uh, it's good mm-hmm. for people who have really, you know, uh, bad relationships with food who have a lot of weight to lose, who've really struggled and been challenged with it. Um, and then this, this can definitely help in that situation, but like someone like, and especially the way you're feeling now, two weeks in, um, I would tell your doctor, Hey, look, I feel like garbage. I can't work out. Cause look, think about it this way. Okay, fine. You go on a GLP one, you drop your calories, but you can't work out. You're overtrained. Uh, you, what do you think is going to happen? Right. You think you're going to go to 10%? Probably not. You'll probably end up losing muscle. Um, because just feeling like, like the way that you're expressing. So I would talk to the doctor and say, I just don't feel good. I feel terrible. I'm overtrained. My blood sugar's crashing. Um, can I, can I go off of this? Maybe try something else that might help me. Um, you know, something else, another peptide, like, like I said, Tessa Maryland might be, um, uh, an option, but yeah, that you wouldn't be a, in my opinion, and I'm not a doctor, but in my opinion, I don't, I, I don't, you know, if you were my client, I, I would definitely be like, I don't think this is a good idea. And I would actually talk to your doctor and say, are okay, you, what was the rationale behind this? Chris, are you, are you, you're not a personal trainer, are you? No, okay. I'm not. Okay. That, and I'm, it's, yeah, this is total experimentation. And honestly, going back to what Adam was talking about is reducing the noise. If there's one thing from a mental standpoint I've enjoyed is I'm not thinking yeah. about food 24 seven. And maybe there is a dosage where that matters, but honestly, it's a, this is a total curiosity thing more than anything. Well, Chris, let me add something. And I'm seeing the effects. Let me add something to what you're saying, okay? You're not thinking about food where you are. You, you just told us you're choking down protein and you're forcing yourself to eat 2,500 calories. You're thinking about food just in a different way. So either you're forcing yourself or you're like, okay, maybe I want to eat that cookie, but I probably shouldn't. So you know, you, you have to maintain an honest perspective if you're going to be, you know, uh, using things like this, otherwise you're just going to, you're going to go from one end of the spectrum to the other. And I really see, I don't know what your history is, Chris, if you've struggled with, um, you know, supplements or your relationship to exercise, if you've had any body image issues, very common, but uh, I, all the above. Okay. So, so (laughs) here's the deal. You're going to (laughs) appreciate the honesty. Yeah. You're going in, you're going (laughs) down a dark path of uh, dysfunctional relationship with food. Yeah. Uh, just based off of what you said. Yeah, you don't want to do this. Yeah. I, I mean, just that's enough. To fa- and I appreciate you being honest because a lot of people would, you know, would take that pushback from Sal and and just get and in, go in denial. The fact that you're honest enough to tell us that. Yeah. I, and and I want to for the audience. I want everyone to know because some people kind of tuned in and out of like my whole journey with the GLP one. And and there's there was a thing going around the internet. People saying that we're promoting GLP. I was like, no. I went in. With my, I went in with the idea of I'm gonna do this like a client would, not like a trainer. So I would tell the guys like, the my trainer mind would want to do what you're doing, which is like I need to hit this protein. So I'm like for choking food down to hit my protein because I don't want. I didn't want to do that. I said I'm gonna go in, and I might lose a ton of muscle, but I want to just eat when I feel hungry and and just go see how this thing makes me feel and not and completely remove my muscle building trainer science mind and just go in and on how I feel. And what ended up happening was I lost 30 pounds and half of that was probably muscle or more. And so now I was okay with that because I knew that I knew how to get it back. I knew eventually I could get off of it. What I found on it that I did really like was it did cut out all the the really hard sugar cravings and stuff that I've talked about on the show for many years that I've had addictions to. And I found that like with this really, really low dough and also what, what I was noticing with my psoriasis and auto, autoimmune, which also is probably related to the sugar stuff. And so I've really enjoyed that, but I had to go really low on the dosage to be able to want to eat again enough. And I'm already predicting that as much as I'm liking, I would like some of those positive things as I'm, I don't know if you're watching my docu-series right now on Mind Pump TV, but I'm documenting my journey. No. Oh shit. You got to, you got to tune in, Chris. We just dropped it uh, last week. Yeah. So go to Mind Pump TV on YouTube and I'm actually communicating a lot of this stuff. So you'll really appreciate it considering what, uh, what you're going through and what you're thinking about. So go to Mind Pump TV and uh, look up uh, the, the docu-series. You'll see it's the last three videos. 
And so I'm documenting that journey. Now, my, one of the things I believe is going to happen is I'm going to reach a point where my body needs more calories and I'm not going to keep, keep taking the GLP and force food. I'm going to just, I know I need to, I'll have to probably drop the GLP one completely. That's what I think is going to potentially happen, but I'm going to talk about, okay. about this. So definitely tune in and engage with me and I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through the process. Yeah. I didn't even know that existed. I sure appreciate that. I appreciate it. It sounds like maybe just something to like, and I'd be curious to see if there's something else, like you said, that might be more beneficial for me than what I'm doing right now. Yeah. It sounds like that. Yeah, it's, it's not it's good. self. You get more fat loss from Tessa Marilyn and you wouldn't get these, what, what these negative effects that you're going through. And it'd be more appropriate for someone, your experience and what you're doing. You wouldn't, you, you would, you actually probably have better recovery from your training versus what you're experiencing now. Okay. That's easy enough. Well, you answer my question. I sure appreciate it. You got right. it, man. I All appreciate right, Chris. that. God bless. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, you too. Thank Bye you. now. I really appreciated his honesty. Yeah, so this, because, my, this is the fear that I have. It's like, you know, you're at 15, 15% is great body fat for a man. You know what's so crazy to me too, Sal, is I, I got oh, defensive yeah. online uh, with some people uh, in regards to that, like saying that uh, we're promoting GLP-1s. And I thought, you know, this is so funny, like how... You know, it was really, and that was the whole point of me saying like, I'm not going to use my trainer brain in this. I like, I want to see what is these people are going through. Mm -hmm. I 100%, I know me, I could have forced myself to sure. eat yeah. and then, and then showed everybody afterwards, check this out. I took GLP ones and got, yeah. and, and sold all kinds of GLP. -1s. That wasn't the point. The point is that millions of people are starting to use this stuff and a lot of them are probably doing it the wrong way or shouldn't be doing it whatsoever and want to shed light on that not promote it it's so yeah. crazy to me but i mean i guess is that because people aren't listening consistently they don't hear context the nuance they just know that you were on it right, right. and they think that it's it's an assumption i i would i would think more than anything and this is the frustrating part is like we're gonna have to deal with this and kind of talk people through this it's not a good idea for certain people. Like if you're just trying to lose a, a few percentages of body fat and you're already pretty healthy, this is not a good option. Right. For you. And, I, and again, I'm glad this conversation happened because, uh, you could see that, you know, the, the path that people can go down. Um, I don't, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I like that. I don't have to think about food. You're thinking about food. Yeah. If you're forcing, you just told us yeah, you're forcing down. Yeah. You're thinking about food. No, that's a great point. And this is just the, 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 you know, what happens when things come out, um, the abuse potential and GLP ones have tremendous potential application for some people. Who's the fucking doctor yeah. that gave this guy this? Listen, that's crazy, think, bro. Listen, they yeah. prescribe he's, the stuff you to saw, people. We, for a moment, we didn't get to see I him know. very much, but look at it. You can see, bro, he, he looks, he's, he's, he's in pretty, great shape. He's in already. great shape. Yeah, he's I in know. really good shape. Yeah. So like, who, I'm not sure. If yeah, it, I didn't you know. see it till the end, and then I'm like, oh yeah, no. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, at all. bro. A I, I mean, shame on you if you're a doctor and this guy walks in. Especially or, if you work with peptides, I, I, I would be like, oh, you okay? Yeah. You want to get a little leaner? I got something better. Yeah, it's not going to more appropriate for you. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Our next caller is Caitlin from California. Hi, Hi Caitlin. Caitlin. How you doing? Good. How are you guys? Good. 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 What's happening? Um. Well. Like everyone, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. This is so awesome. Um, I found you guys through Mari Llewellyn's podcast oh, wow. like a year ago. Um, and yeah, now I listen all the time. Awesome. I feel like I'm probably your standard listener. I feel like I'm younger and like a female, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love the information that you guys give. Thank you. How can we help you? Yeah. So I have um, two pretty different questions. Um, the first is around like weird snacking habits. And then the second is about like my lifting. Um, so the first one, uh, I'll just read my email question was how do I break very unhealthy snacking habits in the middle of the day? Um, I feel like regardless of really what I eat prior, um, so like in the morning or around lunchtime, I feel like I just have this like weird snacking habit where I feel like I have to start snacking at like 2 PM. And then I keep snacking until like 5 p.m. to the point where like I don't really eat dinner and I just kind of have like this weird um, eating pattern habits. Um, so, yeah, that's my first question. So <clears throat> I used to have this saying I used to tell my clients, there's no such things as snacks. Snacks is a made up word. 
And I'd say there's only complete meals and incomplete meals. <clears throat> and so every time that you choose to eat a quote unquote snack, we're having an incomplete meal. And all I want you to do is have complete meals. And so if you were my client, <clears throat> it sounds like you're hungry and it sounds like your body's trying to tell you it needs food. We just need to break the habit of grabbing, you know, chips or crackers or whatever the, the snack thing is and go like, okay, I need to have a meal prepared for myself at this time, whether it's something you pre-prepared or you have a place you can grab like healthy food, but it sounds like you're still hungry. And I'm assuming you said you sound like you're weightlifting. I see your, your, your metrics here. I can see your weight and height and stuff like that. You're in a very healthy, good place. Uh, and you're, and you're strength training. You're probably, your body's probably telling you it needs for food. Uh, and I would just tell you, listen, feed it, but make, make a full, eat a complete meal, have a complete meal at that time and see what happens. Even if you ate just two hours ago, I would be okay you, with that. What are you, what are you reaching for, Caitlin? Like, what are my goals? No, no, no. What are you Snack, reaching for? Snack? Wise, what are the yeah. snacks you're grabbing? Oh, um, <laughs> probably not the healthiest things. <laughs> uh, I feel like I got into this, like just when I started working like two years ago, um, so like my work has free snacks. So it's like a lot of, yeah, chips and maybe some cookies, which is not the best thing. Um, but I feel like I reach for it. Like, even if like, I'm not hungry, which is like the weird part. Mm, sure. So even if I am grabbing like an apple, I feel like I'm still just like grabbing for some type of food. Even if I've eaten like enough calories, I feel like in the beginning of the day. Is, are you bored yeah. at, at that time of the day? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now your, your, um, your body weight, your height, you seem like you're pretty lean. <clears throat> what are your, what are your goals? Um, ideally I would like to lose like five pounds of fat. That's okay. Um, so I used to be like 118, which I feel like is kind of a happy spot for my body. Um, but recently again, with like starting work and such and all this snacking, I feel like I've gained a little bit. Do you know what your body fat percentage is? Yeah. So I got a DEXA scan in, uh, I want to say like July and it was like 25%. Okay. Yeah. I think, um, and do you know how many calories you're eating throughout the day and grams of protein? Are you tracking anything? I intermittently track. So I think I'm around like 20 two to 2,300 calories. Okay. Probably under eating protein. I, so. I, I, you, <laughs> so you'd be surprised how effective eating a high protein diet is for shutting down a lot of this. So, you know, uh, your body weight, I would have you eat 125 or 130 grams of protein a day. And so if you started breakfast, let's say with, uh, you know, 40 grams of protein, I mean, you'd be surprised how much of a difference that makes. And then when it comes to snacks, if you're finding yourself just like you need, uh, you know, it's just a, a, an impulsive behavior um, and they're available and they're free, I would bring my own uh, protein. I would bring my own, and Adam gave a great recommendation, bring a meal, bring a small meal and then and tell yourself, all right, before I grab a snack, let me eat this small meal that I prepared. And oftentimes that takes care of it, yeah. oftentimes. And then the rest of it is just a practice. But if you're <clears throat> if you're under consuming, um, you know, especially if your protein isn't, you know, really high, typically when I have a client bump their protein, it kills it for them. This this tends, I'd say, eighty percent of the time, tends to fix it. In fact, we I, I was just talking with someone yesterday, um, and they had this exact same issue. Um, in fact, this person was even on a GLP one, and they said, I you know I reach for food because I'm stressed. I'm not even hungry. The GLP-1 took care of my hunger, but I'm stressed. I think that's what's happening. We had her bumper protein and she came back and she's like, yep. yeah, it's gone. I don't, I, don't mm -hmm. even, I don't even care anymore. And you said you already think that, that you might miss sometimes. I bet that solves it right away. I bet already you bumping your protein uh, is going to make a, a big difference. A, a, a segue to that, um, it could be the snack that you allow yourself to have at that time. If it's something like that is uh, beef jerky. It's a, you, since you're lower on protein, you need more of that anyways. Yeah. You have a habit already of kind of doing that. Maybe change the habit to uh, beef jerky and then eventually move to an actual meal. 
And then I, I think that you'll be, and there's, okay, you're in a really healthy place weight wise and even calorie wise and your strength training. It might be, you're just, and you're, and you're under eating probably protein. So your body is like, it's wanting that nutrients. So even though you think that you're, you're not hungry, your body is saying, Hey, we, we need more protein. You're, you're, we're lifting weights and I'm squatting, I'm dead. I'm doing these movements. I want to build some muscle. And you're and you're going and you're snacking on carbs, and so let yourself have that protein. You're also pretty strong. I'm looking ahead at your question. I know you have some other questions, Caitlin, but mm-hmm. it says here that you're you're doing a barbell squat. You weigh 125 pounds. You're squatting damn two, 225. 225 yeah. Damn, yeah. That's, I, I think yeah, I, I think your body wants to build muscle. Yes, it does. And it's I think exactly you, what's I think on. you need more protein. That's and you, you know what'll happen if you <laughs> so if you hit your protein targets, even if your calories go up a little bit, you'll probably get leaner as a result. So I know, I know, you, I know. We're always told we got to cut our calories, to get leaner. But sometimes you grow into a leaner body fat percentage. That's right. Uh, so, I mean, you're really strong. That's, that's very, that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exceptionally strong. So, your body might just be like, "Give me, I need fuel. I need yeah. fuel." So, and especially you know, protein. It's yeah, wanting, it's wanting to rebuild and, and and. What do you eat for breakfast? So what's okay? So this is at two p.m. Right? That you're saying this happens around two p.m. Yeah. What's your breakfast and lunch look like typically? Okay, so I've only recently gotten back into eating breakfast. I feel like I was mm-hmm. trying to intermittent fast for a long time. And then kind of like what you guys were saying, it was like exacerbating my snacking habit. Yep. So I mm-hmm. think it's gotten a little bit better now that I've been I've been making a conscious effort. Honestly, after I asked this question um, to you guys, I kind of was like, oh, I should probably eat some protein in my breakfast. So I'll eat like, I'm trying to hit 30 grams. So today I had like four eggs and okay. then, which is a lot. Um, and then for lunch, I'll usually have some sort of salad with like protein, like chicken or tofu, um, and other like vegetables. I, I bet you're barely, just, yeah. I bet it, you're barely hits. hitting hundred grams of protein. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, if you, I, I guarantee this right now. Now I feel really confident about this. You go out and you make a goal for yourself. We are, I'm not even going to tell you stops night. No, just the, here's the rule. You're going to have a breakfast and a lunch. And by the end of that second meal, you need to have at least 75 grams of protein in by that time. You try and do Ugh. that. And then get back to me on how you feel and if you even want to snack anymore. I, I, I mean, I, if you had a 40 gram protein breakfast, the 40 gram protein lunch. Well, that's 80. That's even more. I know. That's I, even more than I want. I mean, I'm just trying. I'll be happy with 70. I'm aiming for 120 grams a day of protein. I, you're done. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> I yeah. think you'll be okay. That's, you're, you're missing that. And yeah. you're str- You're so strong, Kaylin. I think your body wants it. And, and, and what's happening is just you're diverting it to yeah. the available hyper palatable snacks. It. What's exciting about this, when, you, when I've got a client like you who can lift like you are doing, which is such an exciting uh, place to be, and you're in a healthy place, you actually just need to kind of reframe. Like you have this number of 118 in your head. You're no longer that girl anymore. You're no longer the girl that looks her best at 118. I bet you you look your best around 125, 130. You just, you're ready. Your body's ready. And what will happen is even if the weight goes up on the scale, you'll look leaner because you'll build muscle. Yeah, 130 pounds at your height at 20% body fat. Let's say you lost 5% body fat. You'd be smaller Yep. and you'd be really sculpted. You'd have nice shape and curve. You'd feel strong. Your metabolism would be fast. Um, I wouldn't even weigh myself, to be honest with you. I wouldn't even yeah. let you weigh yourself. Yeah, that's so interesting. So like, because we're talking about, I mean, I guess that segues into my next question. Um, yeah, I've always wondered like why I can lift so much. And I, I mean, I'm lifting like as much as these big men in the gym next to me. And I feel like I'm so much smaller, but I don't look like I can lift that much, which is like the weird part. Cause I, I feel like I can comfortably lift like 225 for like three reps for like a couple sets. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, that's yeah. Crazy. But I don't, I mean, I tell my friends this and they're like, Whoa, like that's crazy. Cause I mean, I don't look, I feel like, like I can do that. So you probably do. Do your, do people ever tell you, you look like you work out? Um, like not really. <laughs> okay. Well, look, I, I think, yeah. I think, I think you've got great muscle building genetics yeah. and your body's trying to tell you l- l- let's eat, let's, let's build. Yeah. And, and Kaylin, let me tell you something. It's really easy to lose muscle and to go down on the scale. I promise you, especially where you're coming from. If you were my client, I would definitely not let you weigh because I don't want that getting in your head. And I'd be like, here's what we're doing. We're bumping these calories. We're bumping this protein. We're going to get strong. We're gonna, and like, just keep heading that direction. 
And I and I guarantee you are going to feel and look better. It's just it's a number you have in your head thinking that 118 is the best version if of you. you. 118 is no longer the best version. And of also, you. like consider how how body fat percentage. It's about percentage. Forget your weight, right? If you gained five pounds of muscle, and you didn't gain a single pound of body fat, you would be leaner. So you'd be 130 pounds and leaner, because now your body fat is a smaller percentage of your body. I used to have a trainer, female trainer. She was five one, 140 something pounds. And I would always bring her to my office to sell gym memberships because I would tell people to guess her body weight. Nobody could do it. They'd be like, oh, she's 100 pounds. But like, get on the scale, 140. And they couldn't believe it, but she was lean. She was lean and sculpted, and muscle is dense. Real dense. Yeah. You know? And so, I, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that so much. And if you're as strong as you are, were you an athlete when you were, when you were in high school? Mm, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I played sports, but I wasn't like, you got some, I wasn't in college. You are, got some muscle, be, you got you, some strength. Are you, are you following any of our programs right now? Um, I bought anabolic, um, but I felt like I wanted a little bit more legs. So <laughs> I kind of like built my own four day a week program. Yeah. Kind of, I feel like taking parts of that. Muscle mommy. Let's yeah, send, let's yeah. send you muscle mommy. You'll we'll like send that you, one. Send you, we're going to send you muscle mommy. And then I also want to let you in our, our private form too. I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear your journey. I think, I, I mean, you're a client that I would love to train. You've got a massive potential to, uh, and, and get rid of the scale, no scale, no weighing on the scale for a while. <laughs> okay. Stop the scale and, and, it lies. and, and a good starting goal from everything that all this advice and stuff that we're talking about right now, go get that protein like that. Make that just the main focus is make sure you're, you're consistently always hitting that 120 plus and really make a goal to hit a lot of it early before noon or one. Because if you do that, I think it'll just take care of the snacking. And I think you'll also build muscle. And I think you're going to get leaner just by that one piece of advice. Whoa, that would be crazy. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, and don't it's look at the scale. Crazy, it's predictable. Yes, it's very predictable. Okay, based okay. off of what I'm reading okay. and seeing, like you, so, you're gonna you're gonna do it. You're gonna be fine. So does that mean that? Um, so I shouldn't train like change most of my uh, workouts, like my lifting. So like I said, I've kind of hit. I feel like a max on a lot of lifts. Like I don't really want to go heavier. We're gonna take. Of my we're gonna take care of that. We're gonna take. That's no. We're gonna follow a new, new program. program. Yeah, you're gonna follow a program now. So just okay. yeah, let the program do what it's supposed to do. We take care of all of that inside the program. Okay. So you just follow it as it's laid out, and okay. uh, and focus on being strong when you lift, and mm -hmm. and hit the, those protein goals we said. I I guarantee it's gonna solve all the challenges you're having right now. It's the scales getting in your head and getting in the way. Yeah. I nope. think it is also. Oh, hundred percent. It is. So no, no. And then I'm like, oh no, I don't keep eating at two p.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your body wants more. No. Nope. And that we're gonna put you in the private forum too. So I want you to check in with us like every month or so. Just let us give us a, a heads up on how the program's going, what you're liking, what you notice. Just give us a heads up. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. This is great, guys. All right, you got it. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. <laughs> That scale, man, yeah, messes with yeah, people. Yeah. And you know, once we dug in a little deeper, it was a protein issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. I mean, yeah, you're lifting, you're strong, you're, uh, you're, you're it's like your body. Look, you're going through this. You, you had a low appetite. Mm -hmm. You did one strength training workout, and the next day you you ate four Just meals. Spiked right. It up. And you, I think that it's such a good uh, example because initially I was only eating two meals a day and thought, oh wow. And the average person, especially somebody who's attached to a scale weight, would freak out at that feeling and go, oh my God, I can't eat four times a day. Yeah. I did the opposite. I was like, okay, I'm going to keep eating. Every If I was hungry, I ate. Yeah. I just made it protein centric. That's it. That was my one rule to myself was I'm not going to worry about calories. I'm not, if my body is telling me it wants to eat, I know that I'm strength training. I'm sending a signal to build muscle and it's hungry. I'm going to feed it and mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure Give I just feed it the, it the right, yeah, what it needs. So I, the, to me- Dude, 225 for three reps? Yeah, that's, that's she's for a little 25-year-old 5'4 chick? That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, no, she's Maybe. got massive potential to build a shredded buff physique. She just got to get the scale out of her head. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October. MAPS Muscle Mommy is 50% off, half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Misty from Pennsylvania. Hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. Hello. Hey, guys. How is everybody? Good. We're good. How can we help Great. you? Good. Excited to get to talk to you guys. Um, so I'll get right to it. I've been taking creatine monohydrate for over a year now. And just a few weeks into using it, I started noticing some you know, unpleasant GI things happening. But I also noticed the benefits, you know, 
increased performance with my lifts, faster recovery. So I just kind of been pushing through it the past few months and kind of dealing with it. But I'm also now noticing some other things, just um, fatigue setting in and just some other things I'm wondering if they are tied to my my gut. And I know you guys talk about how important that is. So my question would be, one, are there alternatives to creatine monohydrate that I could use? Um, and if not, I mean, is it worth continuing to use it even with the, the gut issues to reap the benefits of it? Sal, Sal this is, um, I mean, she, this is, this is actually an example, right? Some people have this issue with creatine, very small percentage, but some people do. I believe it was our friend Chris Ketlin is the one who has the creatine that that's supposed to address this. It's so okay. So there's a couple things uh, you can try. First off, if you try um, what I'm about to say and you still have gut issues, then don't take creatine. Um, it would it's not worth the it's not a good trade off. Okay, but um, just looking at the data and anecdotally, um, s small frequent doses tends to be a lot better. So if you're taking how much are you taking and when are you taking it. Just the one scoop a day. I think it's five, right. five grams. So you could try taking, uh, out, yes, man. breaking it up into four small servings. So you take a little bit at one time, a little bit another time, a little, take it with food. That usually handles it, okay? Now, there's other versions of creatine, um, and, and, and some people say like HCL might help. The, ju the jury's out with that. I don't know. Um, uh, you know, in my experience, it didn't make a difference. With the few clients that I had that had gut issues, but the freak, the small dosing made a big difference. Mm. That made a big, it was a big bolus dose that tended to cause the problem. The big five gram dose. Are you doing powder or are you doing capsules? Powder. I wonder, I wonder if it makes a difference at all with the capsules. But well, for the, for, me. for the small doses, it would make mm -hmm. it easier. Yeah. Um, you know, you could buy in capsule form and instead of taking five grams at a time, you could take, you know, one, one and a half grams, you and know, probably, a few times. Would you help me? Because I had a similar meal, issue. With a meal, it would probably be even better. That would be it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd try that. I'd try actually getting the pill, pill form and then taking it with your meals. And, and you know, all every time you eat a meal, just have a small dose of it. Yeah. Or you just take, you know, or again, you have your powder. You would just take a little bit three or four times a day. So is the, so the research on the HCL is murky? I thought that was solid stuff. No, I Chris mean- Chris is a pretty smart guy. Yeah, huh? there's 99% of all the research on creatine is on monohydrate. No, I know. Yeah. Okay, when you compare what's the best, I know that. I know that the, that's what the research there's really says. And there's nothing that's technically better. But I thought I have read that people that actually, the small percentage of people that have issues with the gut- that tends to that's solve. the that's the advertising pitch, but okay. there's nothing. Yeah, I can't point to any good data on that. Oh, okay. um, and anecdotally, it, I haven't seen a difference in the people that I've worked with. But you'll hear people say it did help them. Mm -hmm. You could try it, but from from, from uh, some of the data that I've seen, some of the people I've talked to um, and worked with, small tiny dose because creatine's in food, right? So. You don't have an intolerance to creatine. If you eat meat, you're getting some of it. Right. You're just not getting five grams of it. Yeah. Five grams of creatine is like two pounds of meat, right? So, so soup, really small doses throughout the day might might handle it for you. Awesome. Um, say I try that, and to your point you mentioned earlier, if I'm still having those gut issues, yeah, then get rid of it. Get rid of it completely. Part yeah. two. Yeah. Part, well, here's here's a second part to it. Okay. Lactobacillus uh, bacteria may benefit people with gut issues who take creatine. There is some loose, some some loose data that shows that taking lactobacillus, which is the, one of the most common probiotics, uh, almost every probiotic will have a lactobacillus in there. So you could also try that. You could also do that um, and add that to it. Now, if you do that, you do the micro small doses, you take the lactobacillus. And you still have gut issues, yeah. Just toss it it's out. It's not worth it. Not worth it at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as as great as creatine is, and and we all talk about the positive things, and it, not at the, not at wrecking the gut. No. The gut is far more important, uh, and the health of that. You're than, not going to get any. You're not going to gain any benefit for the message you got up for sure. I see. Okay, that's what I was concerned about. Yeah, I'd love to hear feedback though from you from this. And Misty, we, when you take it, when you notice the gut issue, is it right after? It's it's. I mean, I take it first thing in the morning. I actually just throw it in my coffee. Um, and then I would say maybe two, three hours later, it's yeah. like the bloating sets in and then some mm -hmm. other, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. unflattering 
situations my husband doesn't appreciate. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, w- I would try uh, the capsules and doing it with food. So if like, let's say a dose for the day for five milligrams yep. calls for like six pills, you would do it two pills every meal. Yep, and and, yep. and try that. Yep, yep. That and then be- and then again, lactobacillus is the most common one. Of, it's the most common probiotic supplement. <laughs> and, and, and again, in my experience, that's like. And seed has that. It's almost Seed's all, the best, it does. Right? So if you're mm-hmm. gonna do do seed, if it you, does. Yeah. It's almost it's all, it was almost a guaranteed fix. Uh, I, I can now off the top of my head, I can only think of one person that we had to have stop taking creatine. With you know, when I think about the hundreds of people I've worked with uh, with creatine. Okay. That's awesome. I mean, I have to ask any certain capsule you recommend, because I have to be honest, I didn't even know it was available in a capsule form. No, you, you, you want pure creatine monohydrate. Um, if you really want to take it to the next level, look at the sourcing. Um, Crea Pure is a source. Uh, it's a company that other companies will get their creatine from. Otherwise, you could look for third-party testing. Um, but for the most part, if it's a reputable brand, uh, you're, you're, you're going to be okay. You're going to be taking a good, uh, you know, the good stuff. Awesome. Okay. Are you, Misty, Thank are you, you following any of our programs right now? Um, I have ran MAPS, Anabolic, and Anabolic Advance. Oh, awesome. Oh, wow. How'd those cool. work for you? I loved it. Um, I also work with a personal trainer who listens. Awesome. <laughs> oh, good. Well preaches yeah. the same. Um, so, Beautiful. yeah. Oh, you're set totally then. Beautiful. It. Yeah, right yes. on. Thank you. All right, Misty. Thank you so much, guys. You got it. Yeah, that's I love, uh, I love when we have clients or people that are like yeah, or have uh, trainers. trainers that yeah. listen. That's the trainer. ultimate combo, right there. Yeah, yeah. Is somebody yeah. listens and trains. But yeah, for I mean anybody listening who's tried creatine and noticed that they have gut issues from it, which is not a lot of people. Very um, small percentage. Small yes. doses. Tiny. Small doses. I didn't know that usually that, handles it. I didn't. So I know that I know that our friend Chris Ketlin does sell a creatine, and it, I know that's the the pitch is that it's yeah. for people that have a hard time with it you know, uh, digesting it or processing it in their gut or what like that. But I, the, so there's not, the science is murky, huh? Not mm. really. Yeah. I mean, you'll hear some anecdotes, but, but not really, but the smaller doses seems to be the, the, the trick that seems to be what helps uh, yeah. people. Mm. Our next caller is Clarissa from Texas. Hi Clarissa. How can we help Hi, you? Y'all. This is awesome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. You got it. All right. Oh. Yeah, my big sister introduced me to y'all last summer and I've been hooked ever since. Y'all are just so kind, patient, passionate, and I really love that y'all talk not only about fitness, but like all the important things in life, like faith, family, marriage, conspiracy theories, you know, all the good stuff. Um, <laughs> awesome. You but I will it. say, I usually listen to Mind Pump when I'm working out, but I learned my lesson because I have to be careful now. One time I was benching while listening and Justin, I almost dropped the bar on my face when you told the story about <laughs> going to battle the bands after your parents' anniversary party. Oh, I was like, oh man. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't hurt you there. That's, that's not good. Yeah. So, what you got Less for us? One. What you got for us? All right. I have a main question and then a fun little side question, just if we have time. So for my main question, context is I'm 29 years old, five foot one, played sports growing up and I work a desk job, but I get about seven to 12,000 steps a day. And I teach one group fitness class each week. So I started weightlifting about seven years ago when my husband and I first started dating and just fell in love with lifting. So I got the newbie gains for sure, but then I hit a plateau. And about two years ago, I learned about reverse dieting and started to do that. So over the course of about four months, I went from 1,700 calories up to 2,300 calories per day. And I actually lost a few pounds down to 122. And I got leaner and stronger and like, I felt like I was in my muscle mommy era and I loved it. But then the time came to cut. And just to be honest, I got a little nervous about restriction. So I just didn't. And I lost discipline in tracking macros. So I just decided, okay, I'll eat clean and lift heavy to get strong. So I went from a bodybuilding kind of workout to more of a powerlifting kind of workout and prioritized squats, deadlifts, bench press, occasionally throwing in Bulgarian split squats or pull-ups and dips just for fun. So I definitely got stronger, but again, I'm five one, So there's really only so many places muscle can go. And it felt like I was no longer a muscle mommy, but more like I don't know, a, bu- a bulky Betty or something. So in a year, uh, I did trade steal that. Yeah, we're gonna I'm going to steal that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, feel free to. But uh, I, I like mean, in a year, buddies. I gained 20 pounds and I got up to 144 and I gained two inches in my waist and five inches in my hips and glutes. So my original question was going to be about what to do at that point to lean out while keeping muscle. But I just got tired of feeling too bulky for my frame. So I bit the bullet, bought the RGB bundle, love it. Started a cut at the beginning of August and I wasn't tracking consistently before that, but I think I was around 2,100 calories based on like a couple 
couple of days of tracking. So I cut down to 1700 calories with 140 grams of protein a day. And I've been there consistently for about six weeks. And so I've lost nine pounds, one inch of the waist, two inches in the hips. And I just finished anabolic this weekend. So good. I loved it. Um, and so at the beginning of anabolic, I did PR with a 135 bench and a 205 squat. But I will say like, even though my cut has made me feel like I'm back at home in my body, for the last couple of weeks, I have felt myself feeling weaker in the gym and getting hungrier. So my question is, did I do the right thing going into a cut? And what do I do from here with nutrition and workouts? Because I don't want to stay in a cut for too long, but I'm also nervous about gaining all the weight back. And so I don't know if I should just stick with the RGB plan and go straight into performance because my current goal is to continue leaning out while maintaining strength and improving athleticism and mobility. My husband and I want to start a family soon, so I just want to get as strong as possible for the rest of the year. So this is uh, such a great question. Uh, you absolutely did so many things the right way, yeah. uh, and you're in a great place, um, and your body is telling you it's time to increase calories again. And just remind yourself this, that when you did put on the bulky Betty weight, it was because you weren't you were eating whatever, right? You were eating in a surplus and probably not making good choices. If you just if you eat in a surplus but make good choices now, combined with your programming, which you got and going into performance, great program to do that to address all the mobility stuff you're saying. You're you're set up really nice right now. You did a great job. Everything you said uh and how you but yeah i would like it's time to get out of that cut your your body wants more calories and it wants more pro it wants to be fed right now and it's ready for it you've used it to lean you out you're probably kind of slowing down that process and kind of plateaued a tiny bit and you're and you're about to switch programs so it's a beautiful time to start to slowly increase the calories and i think you're going to see a great results from that and you, just this, you don't have to you can be very very subtle with it you know if you're at 17 now 1900 calories you could stay at 1900 calories for a good four weeks and you the scale probably won't move but you'll get stronger mm -hmm. so that's that's what i would do but yeah you got to get out of it it's been six weeks now cut you've already lost nine pounds of body fat um a, a short reverse out would be a good idea and then you can go back into the cut if you wanted to but let's get you out of it for a bit let don't, your body don't be afraid to to listen to your body too in terms of eating uh i agree with sal 1900 calories is a perfect place to get up to but what you might notice is it's been wanting that and you go to a new program, especially like performance. that's so unique compared to anabolic. Yeah. You're, you're going to stimulate some new growth, right? You're going to challenge the body in a way it's never been challenged. You might find your appetite starting to increase, feed it, but give it good choices. You know what I'm saying? You, you use yeah. the advice. You've probably heard me say, don't eat like an asshole. Okay. But feed, yeah. feed your body when it's telling you, uh, and just uh, make it protein centric and make a good choice. Cause there's a very good chance, uh, now that you've leaned all the way out like this, you get back in your rhythm and you go to a new program and reverse dieting, you might feel that appetite really start to ramp up. Um, and instead of trying to white knuckle it and stay low, low, just to a hundred calories up, like feed it, but feed it good. You, otherwise what will happen, you'll be white knuckling it. And then the urges to like binge or to overeat or to snack or do those things will happen. Like let that body tell you that, Hey, it needs some more calories. It needs more food and just make good choices. And I think you'll see a night, really nice, uh, reverse diet and mm -hmm. build some muscle and lean out. Okay. I think I was confused because during like my bulky Betty era, I also learned how to make sourdough. So we were just really <laughs> the dream. So I think that was, I was like, oh, it's like healthy. I'm eating sourdough and steak <laughs> so and all of that. But maybe I was just eating more like a caveman and yeah. <laughs> not, not really balancing it all out. So, yeah. okay. Okay. So reverse diet, like for a month, you said, maybe yep. try that yep. and then cut, just listen that's yeah, a, you. I mean, I would keep. I mean, month sounds like a good number, but I would also go off of how I'm feeling and looking. You, your body may just want to be in the 2,300 plus calorie range, and you might just see yourself continually, like like Sal's saying, like a good place to probably land. And you don't necessarily need to go in a cut to cut, meaning you could reverse diet and find yourself eating 23, 2,400 calories and not really gaining or losing, but feeling good. That I might just hover you there if you find that. If you find that you kind of reach. The look you're looking for and your satisfied calories. There's, we don't always have to but, be in this like perpetual. And, and, and nineteen hundred calories might even be just maintenance, you know. So if you reverse to nineteen hundred, it's a nice short, small bump. You might just want to stay there mm -hmm. and let your body just kind of lean out as you get a little stronger. That's true. Okay. You don't have awesome. to keep. You know, you have to keep cutting. You know what I mean? You don't have to keep trying to reverse yeah. out. Yeah, you might just want to stay there. Are you Are you in our forum yet? No. 
Okay, I'll have Doug put you in our private forum, and then we'll just- That'd we'll, be awesome. Yeah, we'll just do this with you. So as you go through this process, take the advice we just gave you, check in with us you know, at the end of the month. So okay. let, let us let us awesome. know how things are going on the month and just say, let us get, get us updated, and then we can help you tweak it as you go through it. But you're, you're in a really good place, and you made a lot of really good decisions. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. So I was like, I just need that reassurance and to know what to do next. So thank you. Do we have time for like a quick fun question? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Hear. Okay, awesome. So I go to a small local gym, has a lot of awesome equipment, and I just want to make sure I'm not sleeping on any of it. So we've got like pendulum squat, hack squat, belt squat, Nordic curl, GHD machine, assault bikes and assault treadmills, some of those. So I use some of those, but is there anything that y'all are like, oh, you should definitely use that if you have access to it? Belt squat. If you're not using the belt squat, GHD you. machine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that you're gonna okay. feel translate to all kinds of lifts. I mean, all everything you mentioned was awesome. Yeah. I mean, they're all mm -hmm. great. Everything you mentioned was a great piece of equipment. Do they have yeah. a reverse hyper? Reverse yes, hyper. Yeah. Would be, oh, reverse yeah, hyper. That's, would be a, that's amazing. a really good one. I love yeah. that machine. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love the reverse hyper. The Nordic crawl like woke up my hamstrings and <laughs> suddenly like they boomed into existence. That's brutal. So that yeah. was. Yeah, those are rough, but. Okay. Awesome. Thank y'all. Yeah. Y'all are the best. Thank you so much just for your expertise, your authenticity, everything. Also, I'm a huge fan of Jordan Peterson, so I just uh, couldn't even believe that y'all got to have him on this show. It was definitely one of my favorite episodes. So y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, she's doing a good she, job. She's awesome. Yeah. yeah. She's doing yeah, a great yeah, job. Yeah. She's, great. She's on, yeah, great, great on track, job. doing everything good. I mean, when you're on a, when you're in a deficit, and you start to hit a hard plateau. I mean, the good, easy, classic plateau buster, all things considered, is to come out of it. Come out of it with a, with a small bump in calories, mm -hmm. and that usually does a trick. And well, a change of plan is my yeah, favorite. Yeah, I was going to say. That's like stimulus. my favorite. That is my Perfect. favorite recipe right there. It's like, hey, I'm at a hard plateau. Cool. Program change, calorie surplus. Let's go. That's it. And, the, and normally the body responds really well. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible Six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher. Body